Hey everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So, this is out of nowhere. I just figured I'd talk about it because I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> I was wrong, but <laughs> what? I'm still gonna jump into it. It's Secret Wars 2 from Jim Shooter and Al Milgram. S Secret or Wars? This is Secret Wars 2 from 1985. Oh. Oh wow, right They just after. went right back to that well. So they were just like, it was so good. It made money, that was what it was. Because right. the idea here is that uh, the original Marvel superhero Secret Wars was a toy commercial. Marvel, yeah. of course, fancied itself an entertainment empire, not unlike Disney, and was like, everything that is coming out for children is a toy commercial, 84. Yeah. yeah. In fact, Marvel helped with those institutions making comic book adaptations for some of those toy commercials. I cite G.I. Joe, Transformers, Micronauts, et cetera. Like, they made comic book adaptations of all these different shows that were just toy commercials. Yeah. And they're like, okay. We want to do that too. And so they partnered with Mattel and they made the Secret Wars action figure line, which sold horribly. And <laughs> the comic book, however, sold great. And it was just an action figure commercial. Uh, this voice from Beyond the Stars shows up called Beyonder. He's like, I take these action figures and bam, 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 they all fight. Together, and they yeah. all fight. And it, it does wind up finding its voice and finding some meaning towards the end, you know, because the idea here is that Beyonder says, hey, uh, kill each other, and whoever doesn't die gets whatever they want forever. And the heroes are like, I want to go home. And the villains are like, sounds great, let's kill you. And Dr. Doom's like, who is that? <laughs> and so- Wait, 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 wait. Well, Maybe we should figure out what's going on. Oh no, he doesn't care about that. He's oh. like, you have the power to All like right. make a planet right. or pluck me out of existence. Uh, at the time, Dr. Doom had been dead and yet still appears in Secret Wars because Jim, Jim Shooter's like, oh, Dr. Doom's a big character. He's gotta be in Secret <laughs> Wars. And don't worry, they will explain in Secret Wars 2, a tie-in thereof, uh, why Dr. Doom was able to be in Secret Wars even though he had been dead at the time. Really? So, yeah, yeah. It, it involves a little bit of time travel, mm. but uh, it it's, it's actually doesn't matter. Yeah, but, it's, uh, I'm surprised they cared. Oh, we gotta fix that. Oh, you well, know, sure we really didn't, didn't explain it very well in the first one. Yeah, no, no, Burn cared. The, the, the people on Fantastic Four cared because <laughs> right. they were using Doom. Oh, yes. And they used his character and they were like, uh, What the hell? Well, <laughs> well we killed him. Right. Well, uh, who cares? Look at how well this book is selling. So Secret Wars won 12 issues and it takes place over there and all the books kept going and they hand selected characters, probably the most popular. That's why like random characters were not in that hmm. Secret Wars, despite the fact that the Secret Wars action figure line featured characters that did not appear <laughs> in Secret Wars. Hobgoblin, <laughs> Electro, Daredevil, for example. So they fast track Secret Wars 2 which they dropped the Marvel Super Heroes moniker and just called it Secret Wars 2. Oh, I'm just surprised it wasn't Secret Wars 2 colon cha-ching. They might as well. <laughs> but uh, this, this book, unlike its predecessor, is not just an action figure commercial. Not just because they had no action figures to sell, but also because uh, I guess Jim Shooter fancied himself a writer. He was the editor-in-chief <laughs> at the time. He also wrote uh -huh. Secret Wars. And, he, and he'd been writing since he was 14. I Sorry, to do a you're thing. wrong. You fancy yourself a no, writer. He was a writer. He was a writer. <laughs> just, and a lot of people like it. And in fact, Secret Wars had such legs that Marvel Studios executives are absolutely talking about a bigger-than-endgame movie endgame, and that'll be Secret Wars. Like, they're clearly talking about Secret Wars. That's how ingrained in Marvel Secret Wars are. Obviously, the second chapter in a noble tradition of using the same name. So Secret Wars 2, Shooter is like, I'm gonna do something kind of deeper. You know, I'm gonna, I'm not oh. just, it's not just gonna be an action figure commercial. Right, I'm gonna really reach for something. That's right. Yeah, yeah That's I right. was on the cusp here. Yeah, and explores a question, a time-honored question that Joan Osborne herself brought up, which is, what if God was one of us? <laughs> okay. Uh, just a slob like <laughs> one of us? Just a stranger on the bus. Trying to make his way home. Some event took place which caused a pinhole to be punctured between multiverses. And the our- gas is leaking out. The Beyonders gas is leaking out. The, the, the Marvel multiverse is here and something happened which created a fissure which entered into the Beyonders realm, which as depicted in Secret Wars 2, is just a vast expanse of nothingness. The Beyonder himself has no physical body. He is an uh, all-knowing eternal consciousness. And when the fissure is punctured, the Beyonder, this consciousness that exists in the Beyonder's realm, sees through the keyhole between multiverses and sees the Marvel Universe. And it piques his curiosity. That's what causes him to start Secret Wars. But after Secret Wars is over, right. the Beyonder still seeks to understand. He seeks to know. He wants, he wants to know more. He seeks <laughs> input, like Johnny Five. 
So the Beyonder <laughs> abandons his original realm. Yeah, he thought he was going to get knowledge by making people fight. Well, that was his experience. He doesn't really refer to what happened what, in the last or event. Or what his motivations were. Or what were. his motivations were. Because uh, <laughs> they didn't come up with any. No. Because it's inexplicable. Yeah, and yeah. later works would explain Okay. Why the Beyonder acted the way he did, so and then sure. retcon those explanations into other explanations? This was the time to retcon it. Well, and they yeah, did, but they yeah. Well, they did only in, in as much as you know that the Beyonder is like a blank slate, a man child, uh, mm. uh, just this thing that doesn't understand. Well, right. the gas cloud in Futurama. Yes, Melvar. Yeah. Yeah, he is totally Melvar because after he's done playing with his collectibles, he then joins the fray. So Beyonder comes to Earth. Now, setting the stage for what the Marvel Universe looks like right now, there are a few key players uh, who don't really do anything until they need to, uh, one of whom is Owen Reese, the Molecule Man. Now, Owen Reese, the Molecule Man, experiment gone wrong, gets mastery over molecules. Yeah. His abusive upbringing causes him to have mental blocks on his nigh omnipotence. Because, of course, if you can control molecules, yeah. you can pretty much do anything. You're God. Yeah. And Wasn't he important in Secret Wars? He was important in Secret Wars because Dr. Doom co-opted him, yeah. manipulated him, yeah. and removed those safeguards. So he's omnipotent, but he's not omniscient. No, but he could be if he wanted to be. Uh, but he's not. Uh, that's right. Beyonder is omnipotent and omniscient. Yeah. He is God. For all intents and purposes, the Beyonder is God. Mm -hmm. Because of what the Beyonder can do and does to even godlike beings in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. So, Owen Reese, Molecule Man, Doctor Doom kind of puts him in a, in a new place. Also, Doctor Doom gets him a rad new girlfriend in the form <laughs> of Volcana, because there's a piece of Denver that's dropped off on Battleworld in Secret Wars, mm -hmm. and she lived there, and Doctor Doom steals two chicks and turns them into superpowered characters, Volcana and Titania. Yeah. And, I love uh, Colorado. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the obsession is with Denver, but the, the idea is that uh, Volcana, formerly Marsha, uh, she falls in love with Owen, and the two of them, well, a bunch of them actually get onto the asteroid that was Denver, Colorado, and, the, and Owen rockets it back to Earth, uh, and then, I guess, settles down there? And so Owen yeah. and Marsha move in together, and they just live a quiet existence, now much more well-adjusted. Although, I would argue not terribly well-adjusted. If you actually look at the relationship between <laughs> Marsha and Owen, it's, like, super codependent. Mm. You know, they're like that awful couple that, like, makes out in front of you. <laughs> and has like pet names for each other. They're just the worst, but... So it's like fresh couple. Yeah, yeah. They're in the honeymoon phase all the time. But at least they're content well, with living a year, quiet life. So, that's true, yeah. that's true. You know why? Because you can control molecules. Everything feels fresh. That's true, yeah. Every time the relationship gets stale, he refreshes the molecules of the relationship. Yeah, it just makes more serotonin in their brains. <laughs> <laughs> he, it's not that, <laughs> because they do learn a lesson about relationships towards the end of the story. <laughs> or, not really, and they learn it toxically. <laughs> But uh, so Owen and Marsha are living the quiet life in Denver, Colorado. They have an apartment, they have mundane jobs, and they're content to just kind of like hang and watch TV. Right. That's their lives. Like normal people. Like normal people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the couple that you are when you're reading this book. You're just like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, or the couple you Hopefully. want. Because like you see yourself as kind of like this, this, this nebbish, kind of made fun of guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe and... if I'm 12, I'm not imagining that I'm there yet. No. But no. that's where I want yeah, to be. Maybe, yeah, exactly, exactly. But you're like, oh, the love of a good woman, and she has superpowers too, cool. Yeah, and she's, she's happy to just sit and watch TV and eat Doritos in front of Hogan's Heroes. That's oh right. Oh my God, this is love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very one-dimensional. <laughs> so, uh, Owen and Marsha are watching TV. Owen pops his head out the window because he thinks he hears something, and ridiculous shit is going on. Like, mountains are flying past. He goes, oh, okay. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, what's happening on the episode? Probably, probably yeah. shouldn't get involved. I probably shouldn't get involved. I don't want to get involved. Uh, he does try to stop a couple of them. Marsha blows up one of them. You know, but then they're like, all right, well, that was weird, but who cares? I don't want to deal with that. Right. I'm living, I, I'm retired. Okay, this is either Kansas, and it's a dream sequence, mm. or it's the great nothing from the never-ending story, right. and you're all about to be destroyed. Yeah. Professor Xavier awakens with the knowledge that the Beyonder has entered their realm, and he's coming. It looks like he's taking pieces of ground and moving them around. Yeah. It looks like he's doing another... Oh, battle, another shuffle, battle world. Yeah, another battle world. He's not. He's oh. just futzing around. Oh. Now, Beyonder is... He's simple. He's a blank slate. He doesn't right. really know everything, or anything for that matter. And he seeks to understand. But he does know Owen. He remembers him from his encounter on Secret Wars. Oh. He knows a lot of them. And, in fact, when he arrives in Owen's apartment, he arrives 
as all of them, as like an amalgam of all the characters that he encountered <laughs> during Secret Wars. He looks like Combo Man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's awesome. That's that's great. Yeah. And he's like, I need to understand. I seek to understand. And that's all he knows how to say. I, I like oh. that uh, Xavier's here just to tell us who we're dealing with. Well, and Xavier, and that's yeah. always it's the, the Beyonder. Case. Yeah, it's the Beyonder. Oh, wake up. oh God, it's this. Yeah, it's like I'm reading Secret Wars number one. I know that's the Beyonder. He's on the cover, but mm -hmm. also uh, Professor X. He's he's in a weakened state. Something happened to him earlier, and he is trying. Actually, that's not necessarily true because uh, Secret Wars two is nine parts, and there's thirty one tie-ins. Oh, and. The cool. problem with having a line expanding event like Secret Wars 2 is that not all the books are going to honor your message or your own continuity. It's, right. it's 31 times. They all gonna be with us. Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> but uh, they're also unfortunately not even like X-Men, Secret Wars. Like it, it, they are like interrupting tell, the yeah. book that you're reading regularly. If you're like, oh, Secret Wars 2, pass. You're reading New Mutants, well guess what? You're gonna have to read at least two or three tie-ins to Secret Wars 2 to get through it. And <laughs> Sinkevich is drawing it, so it's like, no, but it looks so good, but it's like, this is so stupid. And they all die, by the way. All the New Mutants, they're, they're obliterated. And then the next issue of New Mutants, uh, they're dead. And then they come back to life and it's just gross and weird. And they don't miss a beat. They're just like, okay, yeah, that's what we're doing. Well, I, sometimes you die and are yeah, come back. Yeah, you're obliterated for no reason. You just move on. Yeah. Yeah, you're, nothing for you're it. grown in another machine. It's not that he resurrects them like he easily could. He grows the new mutants from a friggin' cloning machine and like makes their minds kind of blank slate so that they can defend against the oncoming heroes of the Marvel Universe while he's doing some important shit. And the new mutants oh. are like, duh. And then they just come back to life. And someone's like, oh, Rachel Summers is like, oh, I'll just put their minds back. And I'm like, they never had them. They're dead. These are not them. No, but I stored the minds of the old New Mutants before they died. Right. Oh, well, if you want to yeah. hickman it, you could say the Cerebro stored their minds and oh, consciousnesses in yeah. a Cerebro backup, and they just dumped it. In. It's like the early. Right, but they didn't have to use Cerebro for that. Well, that's very true. Maybe Rachel tapped into it or something. Oh, I thought yeah, Rachel was just panel. putting yeah. her own impression of what this character yeah. is. Well, that would <laughs> well, just, I remember. Back and just I like, remember them. Yeah. I'm just a big asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, obsessed with Cheetos. Either. Like, great. No, because then it'd be really weird. <laughs> But yeah, you could say it's a proto Xavier protocols yeah, situation. There you go, Hickman. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. You don't care. You're not working here anymore. Professor X gets a psychic impression that the Beyonder's here, and he's like, "Oh, I gotta, I, I gotta call people who met. I, I gotta call anybody who would listen and understands because, of course, not everybody knows about the Secret Wars. Oh, They're right. They're secret, you see. That's right. And uh, so. Professor X reaches out with his mind and then falls unconscious. And who does he call? Uh, he calls Captain America. Professor X is off the table. He doesn't really do anything important. And uh, but now we have some continuity. Yeah. yeah. Now, now he gets the ball rolling. Exactly. Yeah, we like can Captain start America is, is flying back to America from uh, England, and uh, he gets the psychic impression from Xavier about Beyonder, and he's like, Nah. So not he, this guy again. Yeah. So he goes to the cockpit and he's like, You have to stop landing in JFK and turn around and drop me off in LA. Yeah. I have an Avengers ID card that lets me do it. And they're like, okay. So they do, and the passengers, and he goes, and the, it's great because the, 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 the pilot's like, you have to explain to the passengers. <laughs> and Cap's I'm like, I'm not going to do it. No, he does. Yeah. So he goes back there and he's like, ladies and gentlemen, I need to land in LA. Sorry. And they're like, um. Uh, sorry? Right. Oh, you're sorry? I don't think he apologizes. <laughs> he just says, like, you're just going to have to get used to it because I'm Captain America. Suck my wow. big American dick. Big time. And they're like, fine. So he gets dropped off with Avengers West Coast and, and, and puts it all together. There's a lot of words in this, these three panels. Of, a lot of words throughout oh the book. Oh boy, yeah. Non-stop, incessant, you might say. <laughs> Choked with language. Yeah, just for him to divert the plane. It takes it's all you need. multiple paragraphs. It's a perfect episode of Back Issues because like, I can cut <laughs> multiple issues down. He's Captain America. He couldn't just like grab a parachute and hop out. Right. Well, it's a it's no. a commercial airliner. Where's he's, he gonna go? No, he's going go from down to the luggage area. I guess that's true. No, he needs to. He's not gonna fly over LA though. He needs them to take the plane yeah. to a completely different place I than they were gonna be. It. He's flying coach. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what a regular guy. But then diverts the goddamn plane <laughs> to go in the exact car. opposite direction. Yeah, such a regular guy flying in his Captain America uniform. He always yeah. wearing his Captain America costume. Yeah, do we have enough? 
fuel for that, Cap? Yeah, wh I don't think you'd be able to. You I don't just think so. flew across the Atlantic Ocean, and now you want to continue flying across the entire country? Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. No. They wouldn't carry all that extra fuel. That would be a waste. I agree, but they do. So no. that's what happens with Cap. So the Beyonder is talking to Owen, and he's like, I seek to understand. And Owen gives him, like, really shitty advice. Because Owen, like, doesn't want to be involved. He's not <laughs> very interested. And it's great because, like, you know, he... He actually reminds me very much of like your friend or maybe you when you first get into a relationship in high school and you're like, I think I figured this all out <laughs> because another person likes me. And so you're just like, I'm feeling great. I have no conflicts because I'm a child. And so I'm perfectly willing to dispense my advice to anyone who will listen. Yeah, right. I've got all the answers. I've got just, it you know, figured out. You know, just, just, just be yourself and, and listen. You know, that's the key. It's just listen. It's like, shut the fuck up. So... <laughs> Owen uh, basically says, like, there's a very big difference between between knowledge and understanding. You know, there's a difference between knowing oh. the path and walking the path. <laughs> Thank you. But he does say there's a difference between knowing it and like, knowledge and understanding. Remember that. Anyway, oh. bye. Anyway, get out. I have to keep watching Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, get the Literally hell out of my that. house. And the Beyond is like, oh, there, there's a difference between knowledge and understanding. Goes through a portal and he's like, well, that seemed like it's going to work out just fine. <laughs> There, I've given him I did all a the great life lessons job. he needs. He also says you might want to change your appearance because it's very jarring. <laughs> so he's like, okay, so he looks like Owen now. Uh, uh, okay. Like the first dude he ran into. Yeah, That's I don't know like, what else to look like. Yeah. I, I looked like I a bunch means. of other people I saw. You said that wasn't good. I guess I'll be you. This, this book is super frustrating and esoteric, especially like the more you pick apart it because Jim Shooter's aware of it. It's not like he's an idiot. Right. And this thing is just like, needlessly superficial no, and like there's there's implied depth no like beyonder is like, okay for the sake of everything happening in this book there is no god god doesn't exist the the, the universe of the marvel universe is is dependent on colorful costumed characters some of whom have like higher power levels than others you know, like there's the Living Tribunal and Mephisto and shit. Like, right. the, the, that's the equivalent. Like, the, them put together is more or less God. Now, yes, there is the one above all, but he was retconned later. But based on how and what Beyonder does to the Marvel Universe would suggest that there is no God. Right, because, nobody's like, in charge. God would interfere with God would shit. step in. Like, if not now, then when? I help those who help themselves. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's really going to help us out against the Beyonder. <laughs> You don't mind, I'm watching Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but the, the point I'm making is that, like, we're introducing God to the Marvel Universe. What if God showed up in the Marvel Universe? Yeah, yeah. and he's, like, just a and he's stupid, just this, like, stupid asshole. asshole. An actual God. Not these, not these people who have the powers of God. No, nope, not even the people who have, like, lived... Like, Eternity himself <laughs> is, is dwarfed by the power of the Beyonder. So, right. like, it's God. Yeah, something that is nigh incomprehensible. But what if God didn't know we existed and was childishly curious about our existence? Right. That's the idea. That's the premise of Secret Wars 2, which is kind of fascinating. That's a great question. But also, not here, the Marvel Universe. And if you want to know, in JLA Avengers, when the Justly come to the Marvel Universe and they observe the Marvel Universe, they're like, this place is crazy. Everyone's angry and mean and is quick to attack. I'm sorry, we can't all be super friends. Right. <laughs> They're right. This place is a madhouse. <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a moment where the Beyonder encounters somebody who attacks him, and then he, of course, does not die from it because he's, he's God. Yeah. And the character says to the Beyonder, like, you can expect that kind of behavior in most interactions you have. <laughs> and now, this, this person... This is what we're like. I believe it was a prostitute who says it to him. Uh-huh. She didn't stab him in the leg, did she? She did not. Uh, but, it, like... She has a world-weary opinion of humanity, understandably so, uh -huh. but she's not wrong and every other person he will encounter will attack or manipulate him. Right. And it's like, that's a little bit of a cynical viewpoint of humanity itself, but it's also a one-to-one -one analysis of the Marvel Universe as it is depicted in this. Mm -hmm. Because everyone who interacts with him tries to kill him, including the Avengers, the X-Men, Fantastic, everybody. Yeah. And they won't stop until the book ends. <laughs> well, yeah, their solution is They're, to punch it like, away. Almost nobody just sits the hell down and talks to him, except for Peter Parker, who just who can't even fathom it. <laughs> There's a uh, God, yeah, this this, this sleaze ball TV guy who is sick of 
like the world as it is. He he feels like the world owes him something, and he hates like TV. And you know, he's like, TV needs to like. I watched an episode of the A Team. They fired no fewer than a hundred thousand shots, and not a single ounce of blood was spilled. Like that's not a true depiction of violence, and it's like the most violent show on TV. Like you need to show gore and blood in order to show the consequences of violence and blah blah blah. Right. Like this guy's proselytizing. So you're like glorifying violence, but without showing the consequences of it. Yeah, he's yeah. a complete asshole. Yeah. And when he encounters the Beyonder, the Beyonder is like. I seek to understand. And the guy's like, well, you have the power to do that. Give me some power too. And Beyonder's like, okay. So he just imbues this asshole with a bunch of fucking power. Oh my God. Through a conduit, which is his Shazam award, which is just the logo from Shazam from DC <laughs> uh, on, a, on a block. Oh my God. And so when he touches it, he becomes a super character of his own right. Oh my God. Oh, is that this guy? Yeah, Thundersword. Oh, oh my, my God. God. And that's Thundersword, who is a real character who will show up one more time after this. Ah. Two more times. He's he's forgotten in the 80s, and then like in the 2000s, somebody brings him up. And it's more is, like, Thundersword! Does he stay an executive? No, he's not even really an executive. He's more like an agent. Oh, okay. But uh, he, he's, a, he's a TV writer, I believe. He, he's... Because he, he, yeah, has, he has sort of, scripts he has to send to NBC. Yeah, he's writes... He's, he's a writer. Yeah. said, I'm sick and tired of writing the, the pablum. The yeah. network's by. Tired of prostituting myself. So yeah, he's a writer. Yeah. I love it because the Beyonder turns his desk into apples. Because Owen gives him an apple in the apartment. <laughs> but I love it, just, apples! <laughs> <laughs> just like, what the fuck? I, I turned your desk into apples. I turned your desk into like apples. How do you like them apples, you piece of shit? So, uh... I mean, I do like apples. Uh, yeah. So Thundersword, like, has an ounce of power, and immediately he starts, like, attacking people who he disagrees with or think thinks are destroying America. Right. Okay. That's on the nose. Right. It's yeah. like, okay, if any of us are given any powers, we become fucking monsters? Yeah, I guess that's the answer. So, <laughs> uh, the X-Men, of course, they're also involved, and they want to deal with the Beyonder because they remember him. So the X-Men get together and Magneto offers to drive them. They get into the limo. He flies the limo over to LA and- You know we have a jet. Yeah, but they don't want to be conspicuous. So they use the flying <laughs> Yeah, limo. we'll just use a flying limo. <laughs> so they go to LA and they attack the Beyonder and it becomes a total shit show. Uh, Thundersword is like a complete dipshit and he's like attacking studios and people and- Yeah, like, basically the people that he didn't want to write shit for. Yes. He's attacking them. And yeah. then when he loses Such a powers, great use you of your power. the most important part of Thundersword. Yeah. He has a Pegasus. Oh yeah, he, summon, <laughs> he summons his horse, Pegasus, like it was supposed to be there. <laughs> he's like, come to me! And the horse does. And he's like, all right! And I'm like, this motherfucker is just like, he is waiting. He's been waiting for ready. power. Yep. Just yeah. like, ah, a, a shred of power! Armor! Okay. Pegasus! Armor! Finally. Pegasus! Thunderous powers! Like, and I'm going Done. to NBC to blow it the hell up. Like, oh my god, what? <laughs> Yeah. Captain America, of course, lands and shows up and he deals with Thundersword. Uh, Thundersword. Thundersword's he, really powerful. He's taking all these X Men on. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's also garish looking. Yeah, he's oh, terrible. Yeah. He's lame. He, he has no staying power. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> they find out that like the power is derived from the award, so they separate the award from him. Ah. And, and he loses his powers and they arrest him. Yeah. Yeah, because he, <laughs> he caused mayhem. He even tries not. He's like, oh, well, that wasn't me. I'm going to go. And they're like, ah, uh, no. You're not going anywhere. The power it went to my head. You no, committed like 30 crimes. The power when they take the award away? No. no. That was his? No, that was his. And what's great is, okay. later, he'll keep the award and then be arrested by, like, S.H.I.E.L.D. for keeping the award. They're like, uh, you can't keep that award. When you use it, you become Thundersword and a complete asshole. And he's like, what? Like, it doesn't have any power left. I beg your pardon. Yeah. I'm an asshole all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, limited to your own family and inner circle. Ah. So the X-Men attack the Beyonder, and, you know, it doesn't go well. Uh, they immediately... They, there's not even a conversation. Oh my god, look at what Wolverine does to him. Yeah. Wolverine slashes him with his adamantium claws, and, like, blood spews out of his open gore, and he's just like, whoa, that's what would have happened to me if I had been made of anything. Well, <laughs> bye! Thankfully I'm not. Yeah, thankfully I'm made of nothing and everything. I am the Alpha and the Omega. So Wolverine's like, I wanted to do that for so long to someone and not have consequences. Right, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that comics code. I want to <laughs> slash everybody to death. I will say, it does look like the Beyonder kind of like throws the first punch. He he, he reaches into Ileana Rasputin. Yes. And, and like, turns her into a dark child. Yeah. Now, that was his, it's his curiosity and his ability. He was just like, oh, you, there's something in you that's trying to get out. It's like, yeah, that's my darkest persona. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> and so she teleports the X-Men away to Limbo to a tie-in to deal with that. Ah. Interesting. 
They did show up and attack him. Well, they, they no, they're just gathered around him. Yeah. They're just like... Yeah. They just encircle like, him with yeah. their powers. Like bullies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, oh, Rachel's... last time they met him, he was taking them against their will to a battle world. Well, some of them. Some of them. Yeah. They know, them yeah, but they around. remember right. that it happened. Iron Man shows up. He helps Captain America subdue Thundersword. They separate him from his thing. Thundersword is now a weakling again. He begs them not to friggin' like arrest him. He also is like, oh no, but like I owe scripts to NBC and I just destroyed it. So like my job is gone. Oh, it's like, shut the fuck. Who is this guy? <laughs> Clearly an analog for somebody the gym shooter knows. Yes. yes Obviously. Shit the bed. This is a real person. Like, I real broke every bridge yep. and then I tried to get back. They didn't even call it like NBR. It's NBC. It's somebody they know at NBC. Yeah. So uh, Iron Man and Cap leave. Cap goes into his own book. The Beyonder follows him invisible, watches Captain America for a few minutes and goes like, ah, oh, his body's way cooler. So he adopts the Captain America physique. Oh boy. So then he uh, he walks around. Now he's gonna <clears throat> cause all kinds yeah, of trouble. he does it as Steve. Well, he looks like Steve. Yeah, he's not in the Captain America guard. No, he just, yeah, he looks like Steve Rogers yeah. in like a blank suit. The original drawings suggest that he's naked, but they didn't want to do the gymnastics of drawing like a convenient fire hydrant in front of his dick or anything. So like, <laughs> he's just in a, in a in a blank white suit. I know, let's make him blue and just show his dick. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, we could do that. That would show DC envy. <laughs> and it would be a year prior to Watchmen. So they didn't even know to do that. Mm. But, uh, you know, Beyonder is like exploring the limits of physicality because he's not, <laughs> he's not mortal. Right. But he is physical. Yeah. yeah. He's got a body. Yes. So he's observing and he, and he sees like people eating and stuff. So he watches this guy order a soda and hot dogs. He orders the same thing. He grabs the soda. He eats the soda. Like the glass bottle and everything. And everyone's just like, what the fuck is this? You're perturbed. That, that's the book. Goofy shit. Yep. He's learning. He's learning. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, in a uh, Fantastic Four book, the Fantastic Four is like, uh, Psycho Man and the- uh, <laughs> Psycho Man? Yeah, Psycho Man. He is the ability, we've seen him in Avengers Death Trap the Vault. Oh. The Psycho Man has the ability to manipulate emotions and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and Hatemonger, another uh, oft- not used a supervillain, uh, manipulate people in New York to hate the Fantastic Four, give them a hard time. Uh, th th there's a whole bullshit story arc. I don't know why Jim Shooter chooses to involve that one in it, but <laughs> Hatemonger pulls out the hate from within Sue Storm and oh. brings out her evil persona known as Malice, who dresses like this. Whoa. And so... Normally people can't see me. Now they won't stop seeing me. Exactly. <laughs> Look at this. So Malice, d you know, creates a problem for the Fantastic Four in their own book. That's it. Has Malice shown up before? Yes. Is this like bringing Malice yeah, back? Yeah, we, oh, okay. we're bringing back Malice. All right. So... Uh, Reed dispatches Malice in a hilarious way because like it's all of Sue's negative emotions brought to, brought to bear yeah. in like a personality. Right. Like as, as, a, as a consciousness. And so... Uh, and clearly it's all from her you know, feeling of inadequacy, or at the very least, her feeling of being diminished by her husband, Reed. Yeah. And, and like all the people that write for the Fantastic Four. Right, well, so Reed realizes that's who she is, like what she's become. So like when she starts giving her speech, she goes, do be quiet, Susan, we're trying to deal with something over here. And she's like, what? And he's like, silence, woman, I told you, I'd deal with you later. And he gives her a good firm smack across the face. And she's like, like, and she's so overwhelmed with anger and rage and hate that it like makes the persona go away. Oh my god. <laughs> that would just what? enrage it more. I know, but she's already at an 11. Yeah, there's, she can't go any it's higher. Just, it just blue screens her and she becomes Sue Storm. She just reboots. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and he goes, I knew that. I knew that was going to work. No, you just wanted to I do was, that. I no. was going to say, he, <laughs> I mean, it would have been amazing and trite. Had he been like, but Sue, you're a beloved member of this team. Yeah. You're fantastic. Yeah, no, he does, the opposite. Do. Yeah. he does the opposite. He ratchets her up more. He's like, yeah. I'm just going to burn you out. Yeah. No! I'm just going to be more of a dick than I've ever well, been. Well, I'm going to be the version you see me as. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, instead of being like passive aggressive at you, <laughs> I'm just going to be aggressive. actively aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Beyonder uh, notices Peter Parker because he's like, oh, that's, that's a familiar person who was in my Secret Wars. So he follows him around and like, it's great because he's just like, hey, he's just like a, a, a grinning idiot. Steve Rogers just like wandering around and Pete's like, hey, and he like gets into an elevator just like, oh, thank God that guy's gone. Like great power, great responsibility. 
And he's like, hey man, what's going on? Why are you wearing those clothes? And he's like, whoa, okay. And so he just tries to avoid him. And then oh eventually God. he's like, okay, this guy's not leaving me alone. So I'm gonna become Spider-Man and punch him in the fucking face. <laughs> so he becomes he's, Spider-Man. He's being creepy, it's legit, I can punch him. I can punch him, it's okay, he's earned it. He's so me. he becomes Spider-Man, he swings away, Beyonder follows him, he follows him home, and he gets there and he's like, uh. what are you doing? And he's just repeating what Peter Parker's thinking, and he's like, you're in my mind, that really bothers me, what the hell's wrong with you? He attacks him. Beyonder's like, don't punch me, uh, uh. I don't even understand anything, I'm like a child. Yeah. And Pete's like, okay, sorry, my bad. So then he goes, <laughs> I've been eating. Uh, my stomach. I have this feeling in my. In, and he's like, "What? What's wrong? Like, what do you? What do you want?" And he's like, "I, you know, I seek to understand." So he like sits down and Pete like tries to teach him a little bit about humanity, but there's no real true morality. He's not like, "Well, first of all, what you gotta know is with great power." No. He never says really, really it. One thing you need to know. He never teaches him it, and yeah. that probably would have ended. It's like, the well, book. that's an advanced concept. He's it, not ready for that. It's true. He yeah. can't even I, eat. Here's. No. I still have to show you the book. Everybody poops. <laughs> that's exactly what he does because the Beyonder has eaten. He says, "I have this this pain in my abdomen." He goes, oh, "You have to go to the bathroom." And so he's like, "Here you go." And he explains the process of going to the bathroom and lets him go to the bathroom. And uh, you know, Beyonder wrecks the bathroom. Yeah, there's glass yeah. shards in there. Yeah, there's like entire bottles of soda coming out. Yeah. So he just says, like, listen, this is beyond my pay grade. You should probably find Reed Richards. He, like, he'll be able to deal with this. Yeah, you got to get out of my house. You should not you be coming to me. It. Like, yeah. Spider-Man is not the first person you come to if you're God himself and you don't know how to work a toilet. He's <laughs> going to call Reed. He's like, I, I sent him to Reed Richards. He teleported. I didn't know he could do that. <laughs> I should probably warn Reed before he gets there. <laughs> well, why does he pick up a phone? He's got a fucking swing there? Yeah. Do you you know AT&T at this time? It's faster if I web swing. Yeah. It's, the reality is, like, if I call... Reed never gave me his phone number. <laughs> he definitely has the phone number for the, for the costume. <laughs> if I call, Ben's going to pick up. He's going to talk my ear off for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Ah, never mind. So the Fantastic Four bump into the Beyonder. They deal with their side story with Psycho Man. Doesn't matter. Oh, I see that uh, She-Hulk is still... Is she's a member of the Fantastic member Four. Of the Fantastic Thing Four. is not. Remember when we did that oh. story, Mephisto versus the Marvel yeah. Universe? Yeah. And we talked about how the Thing was on the Beyonder's planet and then killed himself so he can't transform into himself anymore and then came back and found that yeah. Johnny cucked him. Uh, well... Is that where this happened? Is this where that happened? This is all where this had just happened. Uh, so Thing is on the outs with the Fantastic Four. He hasn't made up with them yet. Okay. okay. So he's a separate entity. And they're gotcha. like, we still need someone to punch stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. They, she pitched hit for him at the end of Secret Wars 1. Yeah. Right. She so was she's like, still he so was going to stay there. She's just like, he a bruiser. Yet. Beyonder's like, Herp-a-derp, what's going on with the universe? And Reed's like, okay, uh, I run out of time for this right now. And Beyonder's like, okay, no, no problem, bye. And he's like, wait! <laughs> ah, that's not what I meant. Uh, I just told God to leave. Yeah, and, and now he could be anything. anywhere. Yeah, so uh, the Beyonder goes, he's walking around, he's seeing all these costumes and outfits. He walks by a department store, he sees a suit, he puts the suit on using mm. his mental powers. But the like, suit, oh, that looks pretty sharp. Yeah, but the suit only fits the mannequin, so it ill fits him. There's like an old woman, like a bag lady, who's like, hey, that's not your suit. You didn't you didn't earn that, you didn't buy that. Plus it doesn't fit you. What? And she like explains to him like how sizing works. What? Yeah, the what Beyonders- the fuck? Yes, that's this book, that's the two thirds of this book. <laughs> Why are you book. reading this? Like right, right. So the Beyonder, the, this is the Beyonder's like education, right? He goes to, to, to... Yeah, I can infer all this shit would have happened. I don't need to see no, it. No, we need to see every agonizing moment where so, we get the Beyonder from where he was to where he is. We're just, we're just ruining the Beyonder. So some old <laughs> homeless woman in New York is now giving him like seamstress lessons. She just explains to him that like, when you put on clothes, they have to fit you and like look right. And, and, she immediately gets it. She's like, oh, this guy doesn't know anything. He's like a living, he's, he's like, like a, handicapped. a full like, size child. Yeah. He doesn't understand. She goes, stick with me. I'll I'll teach you a thing or two. Come on. Like, what are you, dumb? You know, so she brings him to her cardboard box in the alley. Oh my God, it's a refrigerator box. That's amazing. Yeah, and yeah, uh, he's gotta is, be pretty big to live in. Right? He's attacked by ne'er do wells in the alley. Oh. He gets his ass kicked. Uh, she then proceeds to say, like, you need help. Like, you need to be protected. Thankfully, I have a business card from a pair of do-gooders in this organization called Heroes for Hire, Power Man and Iron Fist. Yay! So you should go help them. And he's like, oh you should God. go see help from them. And he's like, okay. So he takes that and he just teleports to that he's location. He's going from one book to the next. Yes. Okay. And then all the people that were beating him up are suddenly like, I guess he'll beat up this old woman. Right, I, I guess, Yeah, well, right? she doesn't have anything. He's wearing this nice suit. That's right. That's they assumed, they yeah. and, and that's explained through dialogue. But yeah. Like, who cares? So he shows up at the Heroes for Hire office, office. in their building. How does uh, he know how to get there? He has the address. Yeah, but he doesn't know what that even fucking is. Yeah, exactly. he's got the card. He's omniscient. <laughs> he's eating glass bottles. He's going to addresses. It doesn't match up. <laughs> so he arrives well, he there. Well, you said you got to find Reed Richards. He teleported to him right away. Yeah, he remembered him. Also... He was in the Secret Wars. 
So he goes to the office, but it's four in the morning, but he wants to meet the heroes for hire. So he just teleports them there. And they're like, oh, what the hell? And they attack him. And then eventually he just like gets thrown really out the funny. window. He like, lands. well, I wanted to see you, so I brought you here. That's it. And he talks to them and they explain to him, like, you can't just do that. Also, like, you need money. You can't just walk around with no money because that's how this <laughs> world works because Power Man is all about, like, being paid for his services. Right. So he's like, you know, the world works. The, the, the money makes the world go round. He goes, okay, well, I'll help you. Spider-Man shows up and like, hey, that's a be honor. Okay, go see guys. You gotta, don't tell him anything stupid because he doesn't understand and they're like oh we just told him that money was important and he's like oh so he turns oh the building God. gold <laughs> yes and he goes there you helped me out but the but gold is softer than concrete right. so the building just collapses uh, it's a building filled weight. with people so the spider-man tie-in is spider-man <laughs> has to go into the building and try to rescue everyone in the building from being crushed to death by this gold building which is a two-part story which is kind of interesting how but everything... can there be a two-part story what happened in seconds oh because Spider-Man dives into the building. He rescues whoever's there. It's four in the morning. So it's He's webbing it up. He, oh. Every item in the in the building became gold. Kingpin makes a play to own the building so he can have the money from that gold. But the the amount of gold that Beyonder created would have destabilized the U.S. economy. So <laughs> there's this whole story about how like Spider-Man. And what's great is there's actually a great moment where Spider-Man has oh to rescue God. somebody and he's too heavy. To carry, but he's <laughs> weighed down by all the stuff. He's like, no, you just have to save me. Because <laughs> you have to drop some of the gold. He's like, no, you just have to save me. You, you have to save me. <laughs> save me, me. Spider-Man learns, like, teaches this guy the value of like, you know, your life it's not over worth your life. Yeah, and then like Kingpin reveals like he owns it. Spider-Man's like, there's no justice. So he breaks into the building. He steals like a golden notepad. <laughs> It just becomes this thing. Like, Puma gets involved, and he. he oh it doesn't matter, God. but it's so fucking weird. <laughs> but it's just from this one all thing. All from this one. All this one gag. Wow. So he just leaves, and there's a whole bunch more tie ins because there's 31 of them. Yeah, that's. And yeah. we're on part three of nine. So nice. this was the Secret Wars title. There was a Secret Wars title. Secret Wars 2. But then there nine. was. There was tie-ins, but they weren't called out as tie-ins. It's just if you were reading that book, yes. you would see. So how would you find them? Well, later on, as they printed them, the top right-hand corner would say Secret Wars 2 on the side. Oh, uh, okay. Well, later. All right. Yeah. They came up with that. Maybe because people were like, I don't know how to find this shit. Yeah. So um, what part about this is secret? Uh, well, the secret is, who the fuck is this guy? Like, <laughs> and only the superhero community recognizes him. The rest of humanity is just, like, thrown to the four winds thanks to this the, the whimsy of this asshole. So... Is this making, like, news? Are people starting to figure out what's going on? Or is it still just a bunch of isolated random incidents? It's a bunch incidents? of isolated random incidents. Yeah, okay. It won't quite become world-spanning okay. until later. But okay. uh, Beyonder falls asleep, or at the very least, he, like, lies down in the alley, <laughs> in, in a street. It's like, oh, I'm tired. I also just... Yeah. A cop shows up. He's like, hey, you can't just lie here. And he goes, like, uh, Why not? And he goes, give me some ID. Show me who you are. And he goes, oh, I can't. I'm from Beyond. He goes, what's Beyond? Where is that? He goes, I'll show you. <gasps> so he shows it. And he goes, there's nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. There is no God. There's he, no God. <laughs> and he goes, he just breaks this guy. And he goes, I need a drink. And he leaves. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's what this book is. That's like, amazing. Uh, and, and it's funny because I looked this up. I was like, is anybody else talking about this book? Has anybody <laughs> talked about Secret Wars 2? Rob talked about it, but like no one dares talk <laughs> about this book because this book is just like, it's just this weird psycho trip of nihilism <laughs> and existentialism where it's like, what if God was an asshole moron who didn't make us? <laughs> yeah. Then no. found us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We always thought you were looking out for us, man. I didn't know you were here. Yeah. I don't even know how this works. So Beyonder bumps into a into a prostitute. Uh, she's sassy. You know, what are you doing lying, leaning against that wall? I'm holding it up, you know. You're not holding it anymore. He creates fixtures for the wall. Like, <laughs> but anyway, he he's just like, you know, uh, she goes, you need to sleep. Like, you, you look like a mess. <laughs> so he just picks a random hotel. He goes to a motel, a no-tell motel. He goes oh. to that place. He crashes there. Uh... The prostitute calls her pimp, who's also like a kind of like low level crime guy. The crime guy and his <laughs> squad go to his place of residence and they plan to rough him up. Right. He bumps into this dude who is like, all right, well, tell me more about yourself. And this gold bar you have. Yeah, well, he pays her for her like services, not like the sex services. He'll use that later, uh, but <laughs> he's, he pays her for her information and time. So Yeah, he has sex, you're just like, I found out what this world is for! He he gets laid a lot in this book. 
It's what? all horrible and inappropriate. So uh, maybe that's why we nobody oh, talks man. about it. So, uh, I was hoping it'd be more like the loser <laughs> or the jerk. <laughs> So the Beyonder uh, explains Secret Wars and where he comes from and everything about that to this crime guy. Interesting. To this pimp. Yeah. And the pimp is like, okay. You turned the building gold? Right. He's like, that's cool. Well, listen, uh, get some rest. Hey, hey, honey, stay with him. Make sure, you know, he's taken care of. Uh-huh. And so he leaves and he waits for him to like wake up and feel better where then he the prostitute and the beyonder become friends and he like takes the beyonder under his wing is this like freaking like pinocchio yes okay yes it's pinocchio (laughs) like what does this remind me of yeah like this childish person like Mm -hmm. falls in with this guy's like i'm gonna take care of you it's actually like it's that yeah so the fucking crime boss like the, the the pimp takes the Beyonder out to lunch, you know, we teach them how to eat properly, don't eat glass, that <laughs> you kind can't of thing. Eat, don't eat the whole bottle. Right. You drink from the bottle. Yeah, he explains <laughs> to him like forks and shit. He takes him to a tailor and he's like, listen, it's 1985. You know, like that suit is very nice looking, but it ain't hip. So you gotta wear like a full purple jumpsuit. That'll <laughs> make you look hip. And what's amazing about his jumpsuit and awesome. his attire across the board is that everyone remembers the Beyonder wearing like a white full body jumpsuit with an open collar and jerry curls. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't wear that more than a couple times in the book at all, Mm. much less throughout the covers. Okay. And it's weird that everyone really gravitated towards that because there's nothing more iconic about his white jumpsuit versus the red one Mm. or the purple one or his Beyonder outfit, which you don't really get to see at all in this. But he still looks like Steve Rogers, right? Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah, he looks like Steve Rogers. And no one puts it together. At least all Steve Rogers. Who's like, give me a different face. What the fuck is wrong with you? So no, uh, Beyonder loves eating. He thinks it's awesome. Just stuffs his face. And he's, got, he's in like a corporeal self. Yeah. So it's getting fatter. Oh. Uh, so, you know, he's just helping him out. Like they, they become friends. And Beyonder's like making him gold and stuff. Uh-huh. And he's, just, he's just getting more and more advantage. And, and <laughs> he brings him home. He introduces him to his wife and his kid. Oh and he's God. like, hey, by the way, could you make my wife like, 20, 30 years younger. I love that this pimp has a wife and kid. Yes. <laughs> what? So he makes his wife. Don't worry, honey. I'll be back later tonight after I'm done pimping. Yeah. He makes his wife like younger and hotter. Doesn't like make his wife cool with his infidelity or his, his organization. Makes his wife like she was when they first met. So this man is truly a romantic at heart. Oh, wow. yeah. So, uh, what about me? No, I'm fine. Yeah, don't you don't change need to change me. me. Yeah. Right, no. So like you, you know, should they, love me for they who go I to am. the track. They do. They, they they fix betting and gambling. He's like an enforcer. He's surrounded by babes, and he's just and he's getting more and more comfortable and more and more ready right. you know, to to assimilate into mankind. <laughs> he's learning language and stuff like that. He's finally like, and his lingo is coming from the pimp and like the the low society people that he's meeting. Yeah. Also, I can't believe the superheroes haven't found him yet. He's a low level enforcer. This guy like is on Kingpin's payroll. I get that, but he's doing all this crazy shit. I know. Well, just find Xavier. It's not really that crazy. He's just like going to casinos and betting and stuff. So it's, it's silly things. Like he lets the horse win when the pimp wants the horse to win. And the pimp teaches him like, no, 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 no. There's some fun of the randomness of the universe. Like it's mm. important to not just have everything you want. Right. He doesn't really learn that lesson, but like, you know, it's there. <laughs> yeah. And it's weird he that the pimp would it. teach that. But anyway, uh, we also this, learn. This is the most real pimp of the world. He's like, look. I'd love it if I could win all the time. Right. But that would take the fun out of winning. It would, it would take the fun out of pimping, <laughs> which as you all know is not easy. So we also learned that Beyonder is like obsessed with gadgets. For some reason, he thinks gadgets are neat and he never loses his obsession with like mechanics and gadgets. Like he, there's this like Cuisinart he uses to like make puree carrots and shit and he <laughs> eats them all the time. It's just, I just bring it up because he loves so gadgets. Weird. That's like one of his only personality traits. Hmm. Yeah, he doesn't get that from anyone. That's genuine beyond Well, that's like a child again. Yes. Child, children, children are like fascinated by, gadgets. like, moving parts. Yeah. The Beyonder visits the pimp at his place of residence, which is now, like, a palatio estate. And the pimp's <laughs> like, I've taught you everything you need to know. Now I'm going to release you like a sparrow into the world. Off you go to yeah. make your way in the, in the world. You've Find given me this, so I'm good. Right. This guy. Yeah. This, he's not super greedy. <laughs> this pimp has learned, like, moderation. <laughs> The well, Beyonder teaches him a lesson. He about, lives in a palatial state. Yeah, but he reaches it. He doesn't like now. Maybe president. Yeah. No, he stops. Yeah, he doesn't want to own the world. He's yeah. like, No, I'm good. And he's like teary. I'm like goodbye. And if you need any advice, just call me. I'm what like, the happy. hell is happening? What the fuck? You reading this? You're like, where's Spider Man? <laughs> so like the the 
the the beyonder is like, well, I need a place of my own. So he like he like facilitates the causality to a, a, approximate him owning land and gets like a place in like, I don't know, Long Island or something. And he has like helicopters and boats and stuff. And he's just, just, just living it up like a big fat idiot. And now he's like huge. Cause he's like Bender when he becomes a human. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, you want a piece of cheese? Like, and he's, so he's on this boat and he's just consuming, he's surrounded by babes and like, oh, we love you. You're so fat and, uh, and adorable. And he goes, I can sense from your mind that you think that I'm repulsive. <laughs> and they're like, what? We mean what we say. And he's like, no, no we you don't. don't. Mean oh my no, God. No, you don't. You don't mean it at all. So I'll just change my body. Now I'm hot. Now do you want to fuck me? I mean, I'm fucking you. Yes. Anyway, but like, and they're like, yeah, we do. And he's like, now I, now y'all great. Now it's time for dessert. <laughs> oh my god. So then, uh, you know, he finds out about uh, the kingpin and he knows, like, he's like, I'm gonna muscle in his outfit because, like, I'm a crime boss now. Right. So he goes to the kingpin and he's like, hey, uh, all your shit's mine. And, the, and you can't say no because I compel you to listen to me because he also has the ability to control people's minds and, like, their wills and everything. So kingpin's like, oh, okay, here you go. So now uh, he's in charge of that. And then he's like, fuck this, I'm gonna be in charge of the world. So he just takes over the world. The, what, the Beyonder like makes the president give him the White House and then he's just like, what? I own everything. I run amoebas and atoms and all the creatures in the sea and land. Like just Beyonder learns about like power oh, and, 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 and then he just runs everything. And the world is compelled to listen to him. So he takes over the world in two pages. <laughs> Owen is sitting in his apartment with Marsha and she's like, oh honey, like the Beyonder's so great. And he's like, oh, I can sense the Beyonder is controlling your mind. Well, let me just fix that. Now you and I are the only sentient people on the planet and everybody else has to listen to the Beyonder. <laughs> and why was wasn't Owen uh, changed? Because he's got fucking- he's Molecule Man. Because he's Molecule Man. <laughs> That's right. it. Because he's he can change his molecules. Yep. And I guess no one can change his. Now let's watch after God. You. Let's not date this book. So, and and by the way, it's not like the Beyonder's like, I sent someone out there has, has broken, broken my will. will. Yeah, no, that doesn't come up. It's just mm. like, let's just check in on Owen because he's going to be at the end of the book. So, you know, Beyonder's like trying to help people out. Everyone's like a slave to him. He bumps into a character named Circuit Breaker who <laughs> was a woman that was brought near death by Soundwave of the Decepticons. What? What? Because Marvel's publishing Transformers books and Transformers is in continuity with Marvel. What? That's so, impossible. No, it's not. Cybertron is in the multiverse, or it's in the it's in the universe. It's yeah, in the universe. Not. Well, it there's was. Transformers rolling around on yeah. Earth. Yeah. Well, it, there there were until Marvel lost the licensing for Transformers, and then they just forgot about it. But right now, now they're permanently in disguise. <laughs> yeah, they're just in disguise. They're they're it's a secret. The Transformers and Autobots and Decepticons are doing their, they have their right. own secret war going That's on. That's a secret thing. Oh, it's a because secret they're Transformers. Secret wars. Yep. So none of the heroes Two. know about Transformers. No, not, in, not in, except for the ones that bump into them, yes. Oh my God, I had no idea. I know. And it's like, blink and you'll miss it. Circuit Breaker's in here. Who's Circuit Breaker? She's like a cyborg, like a la Superman 3. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, no, that's yeah. the worst. <laughs> Is it Soundwave? It's Shockwave. I'm sorry. Shockwave oh, shock almost wave. kills her. Oh. Anyway. Soundwave is the boombox, right? Soundwave is the boombox. Yeah. Shockwave's, ha ha, I'm purple and I have a weird knot face. Anyway. The Beyonder's content. He's taken over everything, but he still feels desire. He still feels compelled. It's not enough. He has everything. Why does he still feel desire? So he bumps into the prostitute that oh, uh, yeah. taught him the value of like apples. <laughs> And uh, she's like, hey, and he goes, all right, uh, oh, right, you like are still compelled to listen to me. I break you of my, of, of my thrall over you, now you have free will. And she goes, it's you, it's Frank, hey, Frank, listen, like, you taught me that I could turn my life around and I could rise above my station, so I How did he teach her that? Uh, because, like, he came from garbage and became, like, she, she can't cognize the fact that he's God. So, like, <laughs> she's still an idiot. So right. she became, like, a waiter and has, like, a life for herself. It's like, I thank you so much. Like, you taught me so much. Like, you you taught me the value of, like, life and, 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 and self-worth. Right. And he's like, wow, free will is important. So he breaks everybody of, the, of, of his control over them so everybody has free will again. Oh. But also, hey, like, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but of the whims of this insane god. Yeah. Yikes. So, so he goes to the Avengers, but they're dealing with, with, with Kree and Skrulls right now. So uh, Jarvis lets him into the mansion. He sits around and waits for them. And then he's like, ah, fuck this. I'll, call, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just deal with them in their own book. So he teleports <laughs> to space. It was a disaster. He returns in the same page. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll visit Daredevil's book. 
which he does. What? He wants, now? Yeah. Now so, you're going to Daredevil. Now I'm going to Daredevil. He took so over the world. Yeah. And <laughs> the Daredevil book is awesome and weird. Like, basically, he wants to hire Daredevil, uh, Matt Murdock, and hmm. Foggy Nelson. Uh, and in, in retainer for their services, he's like, here's some gold. And they're like, you can't just give us gold. I, what are we supposed to do with this? It, 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 it's, you're going to stabilize the economy. Like, we can't just use gold. We're off the gold standard anyway. <laughs> and... Uh, and so he gives Matt Murdock his sight. Oh. And so, yeah. And so Matt is like Daredevil and he's doing his thing and he's able to see. And he, in this story, the last thing he wants to see is a girlfriend that no one remembers. So like, whatever. <laughs> uh, but he also gets to see like New York and he's just like, he realizes that like he values, like Daredevil basically forces Beyonder to take his sight away and re re refuses the Beyonder's like offer and services doesn't matter. Is it because he's Catholic and like, no. like you're not God? No, that'd be awesome, but it's not. It's, <laughs> it's just like, I, I he feels- like it's not natural. It's not even that. It's like, he he's like, you, I'll have something to lose. Like I will what? covet my sight over other things. What about your powers? Do you covet your powers? No, nah, I just, I just rely on lawyer? them. It, it's, it, it's really flimsy, but it's it's a pretty okay issue. The, the other one with Superior Iron Man's better. So. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Beyonder learns more about being a fucking dipshit, and <laughs> he's just kind of like tooling around. He's banging broads, doesn't matter. He's just he's tooling around in Lamborghinis, running every piece of equipment he possibly can. He's like running Cuisinarts, <laughs> and he's like using CB radios and shit. He's just so fascinated by them. So he goes to Owen again. He's like, hey, hey, are you ever gonna not be watching TV and I don't know <laughs> do something in this book? Now she goes to like she goes to dance her size to like you know lose weight. And so he's by himself. And so he bumps into Beyonder. Beyonder explains, you know, I feel desire. And Owen's like, well, what you should do is get yourself a girlfriend. Cause like I'm in love and like, I don't feel any desire anymore. It's great. My life is awesome. Cause I can't get sick. I can't age. I can't die. I have an amazing time. And this girl is like uh, unspeakably devoted to me. And like- You should just get that. Just get that. Just, just find love. Yeah. But it's not just having a woman like you. You have to like, she has to want to be with you. For, of her own volition. Right. And I know Marshall wants that. He banged this woman who was like, when will I see you again? He's like, oh, never, never. <laughs> and like, oh. he was wrong. <laughs> so he goes back to her. He's like, hey, maybe I could, maybe, maybe things could work out between us. Yeah, maybe I was wrong. Maybe yeah, she not took never. pills and killed herself. And he's like, and he reads the note and she's like, you left me and I knew that you'd never be with me again and I could never live without you. And he's like, oh, okay. So he brings her back to life. Oh my God. She's like, oh, like, I, I love you. And he's like, ah, mm -mm. see, you see this as a transaction. You, I gave you life and I give you what you want. I make you feel good. Ergo, you love me. That's not what I want. Get out. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> so she kills I, herself. I brought you back to life. Just reject you. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. I've seen what's truly in your heart and I've laid it bare for you. Yeah. It's As not opposed good to before enough. when I just dumped you, yeah. you killed yourself <laughs> when I just dumped you like a regular person. Yeah. But now, now I've I revealed myself you. as God. I brought you back to life and I rejected you. He then, it's like he dumped his girlfriend and then went on Match.com in front of her because he's like, we're not going to be together, but like, let's take a look at all the different myriad <laughs> people that might satisfy me. And she's great because she goes, some of those people are dudes because it's 85. And he's like, so? I can make myself a chick? Not that it doesn't matter. No, it's that I can make myself female so that it's okay for dudes. Yeah, right, no, right. it's totally fine. He's like, no, yeah. you know what? I like being a dude. I'm not gonna do that. Oh. But you know I'm what? also not gonna be with a dude if I'm a dude. Right, so her rejection causes her to like become defiant and strong. She doesn't show back up in the book. Oh, Who cares? okay. But he does- but she uh, survives. She survives for now. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, stronger than ever. Right, and, and he does select a mate in the form of <laughs> Allison Blair, AKA Dazzler from X- What? Yep. Oh my God. Hey, How does he decide that? Masters. Yeah. And Johnny Storm could have been like, <laughs> no! <laughs> and then things like, yeah! You know what feels, you asshole! <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh man. But uh, Allison Blair, why does he pick her? Because the they're trying to push Dazzler right now. Yes! <laughs> now, yep. in I canon, hear Jem is truly outrageous. What about Dazzler? Dazzler's more of Tiffany than Jem. But <laughs> I I'll, I'll grant you, uh, Jem. I, maybe because Dazzler was a herald of Galactus for a time. 
Hmm. But like, you know, I touched Godhood, but probably not. Right. So uh, it's not addressed. So Dazzler is uh, she's she's driving in a car, and he pops her into a like apartment, floating on an asteroid in the middle of space. And she attacks oh. him, and he's like, "Hey, listen, like, no, it's cool. I'm beyond her. You're what?" Yeah, how does she attack him? Is there a noise happening somewhere? Uh, or? She, he's saying things, and so she ah. turns into bed. Well, who cares? She uses her fabulous <laughs> dazzle powers, and so he like dumps all the information about who he is into her head to save us time. Right. And she's like, her "Wow, brain cool." Doesn't explode. And she goes, "Well, fuck that. I don't want to do that. Take me back to Earth. This is weird." So they drop back on Earth in the Arctic. They stay in an igloo. He like gets naked and creates a bearskin rug and he's like, hop in. She's like, no, what? Get away. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay, uh, how about this? So they go on a date. He creates like a, ho- a horse-drawn carriage in the middle of like <laughs> Central he knows Park. What that is. Y- yeah, well he like consciously images of romance. Right, right. He, he basically tries to woo her. He takes her to Rio at carnival time, Paris. <laughs> just bam, 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 like just different yeah. dates all at yeah. once. I'm just gonna do all the things. Yeah, in, in rapid But succession. I gotta do it real fast. I'm, yeah. I'm, not uh, gonna, I'm no in a hurry. Not gonna take no for an answer. Right, no, that not that. Oh, of course not. Yeah. So he's like, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make you smile. You should smile more. You're like, you know, ugh. Yeah. But uh, you know, so she's like, this is kind of weird in public. And he's like, that's okay, everyone here is me. And like, you see like all the mater d's and waiters and <laughs> people <laughs> of Paris are him. And she's like, this is really, this is really weird. This is weird, man. You can't. You're not making it better. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's so, worse. Right. So he puts her like on the top of Mount Everest to have a conversation. And he's just like, listen, okay. I, I may have come out a little strong, but I promise I'll dial it back. Just give me a chance. And she's like, all right. So they bang. And uh, so they. What? <laughs> so they. What about him well, causes her. Well, he's hot. Give me a chance. And, okay. uh, and he can do anything. And you know he does reveal yeah. that he also can control people's minds. So uh, he he bangs her, and then uh, they have breakfast uh, in the form of like this, you know, ridiculously ornate uh, locale. Yeah. they being he he he's being she's being serenaded by like a, an, or, an orchestra. Uh, he says, "Hey, listen, like check out this. Uh, I created like a sound stage and a whole like board and all this stuff to like help with your career and your desires for." Oh you. yeah. So go go check this out while I'll while I'll go deal with something because I got I got to go check something out. So he goes and attacks Alpha Flight, and uh, what? And undoes a couple of like retcons for Alpha Flight. Those Why? Those dark Canadians. Yep. Like he grabs a uh, shaman's mystical bag, which actually came up in our uh, X Men versus the Fantastic Four story arc. But uh, shaman has this mystical bag. Uh, the, the talisman was trapped in the bag uh, at the time because it's like mystical and it can go anywhere. But like it's also sm- it's it's small. So he opens the bag. Talisman walks out. And they're like, what the fuck? How? You mean she was just, she could just come out? He's like, well, it was too small before. <laughs> what? Right. That's why she couldn't come out of the bag. Right. The opening was too small. The opening was too small. She's like, hey, no. She uh, her uh, face. Gone. So, get out of her. Anyway, I so he grab, saves Talisman. He saves Talisman for no other reason than to reach into the bag back at normal size and take out a ring that he uses to propose to, to, to Dazzler. Is it a special ring? Sure. I looked up this ring high and low. I couldn't find anything so about it. so weird. It's you know like, need I need, need like, that bag Talisman. to get that ring that I know no, is No, I Talisman. need to put Talisman back on Alpha Flight. Just and I'm the editor-in-chief of Marvel, and I know I can do that in two panels. That makes sense. <laughs> Better than, like, pass me that ring behind you. Just a hand yeah. comes out. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> oh, wait, you're all bones now. So, or dogs. <laughs> so he leaves, and he takes the ring, and... Uh, Daz was like, I- I'm going to go. And he's like, wait, wait, before you go, marry me. And she's like, what? No. We went on no. one date. Well, we went on like three dates in one night. In like, in like 20 minutes. Yeah. Also, I slept with you. And then we banged, but like, that's it. And breakfast was nice, but no. Yeah. But she goes, I got, I got life going on. Like, I have things to do. I've got a career. And he goes, oh, okay. So he puts her at a concert for herself and they're cheering for her. She's like, stop, this is fucked up. What are you doing? <laughs> I didn't rehearse. He goes, no, 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 like, that's okay. Like, they all truly do desire to watch you. I've made them want to watch <laughs> you. It's Citizen Kane now. And she's just like, put me back where I was at the time we were talking. And he puts her back. She's like, bye. And he goes, should I call you a taxi? Because she goes, no, you'll probably create one and become the taxi. <laughs> And then the Avengers show up and they're like, hey, asshole, we're here. And then they attack we're him. We're finally dealing with you. Good. So the X-Men, so the Avengers attack the Beyonder and there's a big fight. 
And it's a big, ridiculous fight where everyone attacks him, and they don't have any patience for him, and there's no conversation. Right. And Allison's watching it all happen. She's like, Jesus Christ, dial, dial it back. He's just standing there. Like, he didn't ask for any of this. He, he's mm. he's just a simple man-child. Right. Stop. And so <laughs> He's just a man-boy. Right, so they're attacking him, and they're going to, like, kick his ass. And then she steps in, and she saves him from the Avengers. Are you telling me you slept with a man-boy? Right. Uh, uh, let's, no. just, let's just skip past the, 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 yeah. that. No, I mean, uh, I, I didn't really put it all together until right. um, <clears throat> after, I guess. So then she's like, get us out of here. And so the Beyonder and Allison get teleported back to the top of Mount Everest. And she's like, whew, that was close. He goes, yeah, yeah, it was. By the way, I created them. They're not really the real Avengers. I made them the Avengers so that they would attack me so that I would see if you wanted to defend me. And she's like, that is so fucked up and weird. He goes, you have to understand, like, I'm... I'm God. Like, here, I'll make you God too. So then he imbues her with the same level of powers as himself. Oh, God. oh my God. No. And he's like, look, now we are gods. We are the two gods in the world, you, in the universe. You know everything, you can do everything. You can everything. feel everything, you know everything, you can do anything, and we'll dance through the cosmos and just fuck all across the multiverse. <laughs> and she's like, fucking stop! Uh, uh. And like, so is the reader. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, this is too much. What? So, too far. So she like just begs him to take the godhood away from her. Can't she just make him do that? She's God. Yeah. But I know. Or Can't you do that? Aren't you God? <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, she does, like she loses her godhood. And right. then uh, she says, oh, I'm ready. I'm in. I love you. And he's like, what? yes, I knew it. Well, it now that I've been God, been... I get it. All right. I'm taking my god powers away and yours. You're too creepy. Right. No more power. That would be yeah, awesome. She could have fixed it. She could have fixed it, but she was, She didn't. She was too creeped out. So now she That's loves him. That's how creepy the bounder is. So she loves him. She's like, I only, I only want you. I love you. And he's like, oh, right. I made you love me. Here. Uh, uh, now you don't love me. Any now now uh, you have uh, your will back. And she's like, get away from me. Uh, oh, right. That's why I don't, shouldn't be, be giving people free will. Oh, yeah. This is it's unhinged. You can't totally believe hinged. anything in this book because at any point he could be or could not be controlling everybody. Yes. And you just have to take his word for it that like, oh, right now it's just, uh, I'm controlling like, her. It's not that I made the Avengers come attack me. I made new Avengers. Yeah. I created the Avengers and they attacked me like they would have. So they were, in essence, their own sentient beings, <laughs> but compelled by my will to do what I wanted. And then when they were done, when I, I made them, them not exist I anymore. I destroyed them. What? <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, he's walking along a lonely, dusty train track. Oh. A freight train's coming for him. He unmakes it. Oh, Dr. Manhattan's it. Yeah. He splits it apart and all its before pieces. Dr. Manhattan. Yeah, but he doesn't take the people apart inside. No, he does not. No. Uh, that way he wouldn't run into a new character created for this that would eventually become a member of the New Mutants named Boom Boom. Uh, Boom, Boom, Boom Boom is a 13-year-old mutant who was abused by her father who's looking to go to the Xavier School. She bumps into the Beyonder and she, like, travels with them for a little while. Who's Boom Boom? <laughs> She's proto-Jubilee. Oh. She's got eyewear. She talks yeah. like an 80s kid. She goes to the mall. She's a teenager. She's uh, zippy and a, and a psychic type character, but she doesn't quite work. She also has the ability to create like what is equivalent to plasmoids that explode. Oh, no. <laughs> Jubilee makes fireworks, but Boom Boom makes time bombs, as she calls them. Uh, she can make balls of energy that explode given an amount of time that she determines for herself. So like a 10 minute timer, a two year timer, doesn't matter. She can make little energy okay. balls that will explode. Well, that's kind of neat. Yeah, it's a neat power, but it's never explored to any real degree. Uh, she is, that's why she's relegated to the New Mutants. Mm. And then it was obscurity. So uh, she basically camps with the Beyonder. She's just like hanging out with him. Uh, and he talks to her about like life and his, and how sad he is that he was rejected by Dazzler. Right. By fucking Dazzler. <laughs> so he's yeah. like, Dazzler, Dazzler sucks. So he Dazzler, talks about- You were rejected by Dazzler? Dazzler, even I know who Dazzler is, she sucks. No, she's a huge <laughs> pop 80s icon at this point. So it's like, oh. it'd be like if you were rejected by Taylor Swift. Oh, like, yeah, that makes more it? sense. Yeah, okay. So uh, they hang out. Beyonder talks about how depressed he is and how he wants to die. He's thinking about killing himself, or at least oh. going back to the Beyonder realm. And oh. she's like, eh, you won't. Like, I wanted to kill myself too, but I found that like life's kind of important and precious and I like it, blah, blah, blah. So you like, go talk to Professor Xavier. Yeah. <laughs> no, she wants to, but she, she doesn't tell to? him to go talk to him. She's just like, she basically gives him her own like nickels worth of free advice. Right. And she's just like, you just want like company and to be loved. And he's like, well, I'm going to go fuck everything. And she's like, okay, well, give me, let me, let me give you a hug. So she hugs him and then he leaves and she goes, oh, well, that's kind of sad. And now she's alone. Oh. And so the Beyonder goes back to the Beyonder realm. She oh. had hot dogs. He made them. Okay. <sighs> they were in the woods. He went like this. They got a tent and fire and uh, wieners and 
spits four wieners and whatnot. So he's in the beyond realm and he's like, I'm back. Cool. Actually, I should probably discooperate my body too. Cause like, that's not me. Yeah. Right. I, I shouldn't have like a body a here. I'll do that in a minute. Yeah. You know, it's kind of empty here. I wish I brought some stuff. Well, I guess I can bring some of my neat, uh, gadgets that I liked and some people and anything I want uh, and, and Dazzler and then like just images of Dazzler where he's like, no, what am I doing? Why am I even talking? I, I'm on beyond speech. And then his pants explode because Boom Boom put a time bomb in his back pocket. What? Okay. As like a prank. And he's like, hmm. I'm gonna get that boom boom. Yes, yeah, so she's gonna uh, hitchhike her way to Westchester. He picks her up in a Lambo and he's like, get in, I'm not gonna hurt you. And she's like, ah, I knew you were gonna come back. He's like, how did you know that the explosion was gonna hurt me? And she's like, y you could do anything. Why wouldn't it? You know, I just thought it'd be funny. Yeah. So he drives her to the Xavier School. And she's oh. like, we're gonna go here. These people are tolerant and accepting. You talk to these people, maybe they'll help you too. The X-Men blast out of the door like, it's the Beyonder! They push <laughs> Boom Boom out of the way and they just try to murder him. Uh, it should have been like, they kill Boom Boom. <laughs> oh my God. They just like, they do optic blast and claws and yeah. lightning yeah. and everything comes at them. No, they and like, Boom Boom's just a, a tragedy. You know, she opens the door. She's like, hi, uh, Colossus is like, yeah, what do you want? She's like, I, I'm, I'm, a, I can make bombs and stuff. Like, hell, hell. And, then, and they're like, oh shit! They push past. They're like, oh shit! It's him, the Beyonder. That's amazing. And then they go and attack him. He drives away from them. They tear ass past her to get to him, and she's just left on the lawn. And then she runs away again. Yeah. Uh, when Beyonder and she talked earlier, she, uh, so awesome. she says, well, what, what, like. What if I want to talk to you again? He goes, well, just say my name, I guess. I can hear and see everything, so I'd probably hear that. Right. So she goes to the woods, and she calls for him, because she's alone again, she doesn't know what to do, and he doesn't answer. So she makes a bomb, and she holds it to kill herself. Oh. What? And, uh, and so it goes off in the woods, and then Beyonder shows up, and he's like, nah, I knew you weren't ready to quit. Because like, I stopped you from dying, and you regretted the decision after you had already blown up the bomb. You know, it's one of those moments. Yeah, which yeah. Which actually gets paralleled later. But, oh, uh, Jesus. So, uh, this book is getting crazy. Yeah. So Beyonder and Boom Boom get into the Lambo and they go to the World Complex headquarters of the Celestials. They go to meet the gods of the Marvel Universe. <laughs> uh, by the way, the they go to the boardwalk on the World uh, Complex because the Celestials are just like cosmic beings. Beyonder talks about how like lame and stupid they are. Like they made things or they created life or whatever. And then they just kind of watch it happen, don't give a shit, they don't do anything. They don't get involved. Right. They're, 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 they're lame, not unlike me. So they're going to go get it like they're a... They're playing skee-ball? They are playing skee-ball because like the Celestials are more or like because they don't move for eons, you know, they're more or less like buildings. They just stand there. But like mm. the world complex is their headquarters, but they don't use it for anything. So aliens have moved in and created like a society on top of the what? complex. So, <laughs> you know, Beyonder like pops out and boom, boom, and he like get like crazy earth bread and stuff like that. And... Uh, one of the aliens is like, holy crap, are you the Beyonder? He's like, yeah, have you heard of me? He's like, everyone in the friggin' galaxy's heard of you. Like, on the only people who don't know who you are are Earthlings because they're stupid and they don't know anything. What? Well, how does everyone know about him? He Be came from another, like, dimension or right, whatever. Right, exactly. But they've heard of him and so that's it. And Look, then it was secret from wars Secret Wars, wars I guess. Yeah, it wasn't secret for the rest of the galaxy. Exactly. Yeah, those, they were just wars. Yeah, so, you know, he's talking about how, like, Except yeah. he didn't take anybody from other planets. He only took people from Earth. So how would other planets he even know about that? He did take other planets. He took pieces of other oh, planets. Oh, that's right. He took pieces of other planets. Yeah, and the other planets are like, look, we share information. Yeah, they're all in part of a communications right. network. So We're not about, disgusting. you know, hiding things from our citizens, yeah. creeps. Well, the thing is, the word secret isn't market-tested marketable for other worlds. It is for Earth. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the Beyonder explains that, like, I guess they're kind of nervous around, you know, me, because I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> And she's like, I mean, the Celestials didn't look at you. You're not that big of a deal. And he's like, oh, yeah? Oh. So he goes up oh, into space they? and he goes, God. hey, Celestials, I'm going to fucking unmake everything unless you get involved. Right. Look at me. Didn't you hear me? They don't look at him, which would be a really cool teachable moment. But like yeah. instead, he's like, oh, I get it. You didn't move because you thought I wasn't serious. Now look into my heart and see if I'm willing to destroy everything just to get your attention. And they all just start flying out. Oh, wow. Fuck you, Beyonder. So the uh. Celestials attack and he bats them all away like they're nothing. They crush the society beneath their feet oh from their like landing. Yeah. And she's like, you're crazy. 
<laughs> you were really gonna unmake everything just to prove a point to these fucking assholes? I didn't even know Celestials existed. <laughs> And he's like, well, how about this? Like, you had a black eye when your father beat you. Well, now you don't anymore. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah, that fixes everything you, you that I pretty? guess. You want to because you're kind of like plain looking? Now you're pretty. She's oh, like, my God. Oh, you want to be older? Now you're older. And she's like, get the fuck away from me. Stop. And he's like, all right, bye. And he teleports it back. Wow. Is she still older? And No, he just makes her normal. Oh, okay. So, uh, well, thank God he doesn't teleport her back right after she blew herself up. Yeah, so she immediately goes uh, and calls the Avengers. The Avengers, like, the, like the, the phone service gives her the runaround until she mentions Beyonder. Like, the Beyonder will be right there! <laughs> we want to punch him! Because we're all in line to punch the Beyonder. Yeah. yeah that's going to work really well. Oh, yeah. So, you know, Beyonder listens to records and hangs out. Oh, uh, my... God. How is this still going? It's, it's actually shorter than I it's thought. It's just an hour. It's just the same stuff over and over. Yes, it's yeah. like a Mobius strip. This thing is like an exercise in, like, in, in futility. Uh, uh, except I, it keeps ramping itself up. That's right. It does. Right. It, it, it takes it to the next level each time. Yeah, I think that's kind of But neat. he never learns anything. No. Not yet. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> so Boom Boom teams up with the Avengers and she goes to the campsite and she lures the Beyonder. She's like, Beyonder, come in. He goes, oh, I'm so glad you called because like, you know, I realized that that was fucked up what I did and he's starting to learn a lesson and then the Avengers attack him and the Fantastic Four uh, and they all just start piling on him and they're just wailing on him. Dog like, pile on the Beyonder. That's exactly what happens and he's like, uh, he, he threw off Celestials. He can't beat you. Well, he... He yeah. doesn't want to kill them immediately. He just He's just like, ugh. So Captain America goes, stop, look, he's not even fighting back. He's just lying there. And he gets back up and they're like, Cap, well, I don't know. We kind of want to beat his ass. And he's like, dude, just just let's all take a chill pill for a second. Hang on. And so then Captain America's like, all right, let, let, me, let me talk to him. Listen, Beyonder, why don't you just go back to where he came from? Because <laughs> he's Captain America. Yeah. He's, you don't belong here. <laughs> you don't belong here. You're not from here. You're not from You're here. You're not real. You're not even from round here. It's more here. like he's xenophobic. Yeah. But uh, then he wanders off and, you know, Iron Man's like, he's just wandering off. Should we stop him? And Cap's like, let, it, let him go. Let may, him go. May, maybe he'll wander back to where he came from. And he'll everyone's wander just the like, fuck Jesus out of my Christ, country. what a fucking nightmare. What if he forgets where he came from? So, <laughs> you never forget where you came from. Beyonder, in another series of tie-ins, uh, learns that he wants to be, like, benevolent and a hero. So he builds this huge, like, Beyonder headquarters and staffs it with, like, cars and jets and all kinds of fun gadgets and like a, a huge like amphitheater for him to like give missions to and, and like 50 juicers <laughs> oh yeah big time a juicer in <laughs> every hallway juicers. room yeah so beyond makes his new his new headquarters in sparta illinois shout out to you uh chicago suburbs out there he deals with dave so dave is another plucky regular human being that encounters the beyonder and uses him for his own nefarious purposes what you know, like the pimp did, yeah. and the prostitute did, and yeah. the girl. Well, now it's Dave. And Dave is like, he's a down in his luck reporter. And they're going to fire him, but he's he's like, I'm going to find out more about this flying man who built this compound in the middle of like our town for no reason. I so, mean, that is a story. Yeah. So he waits outside of his complex, and he like flags down the Beyonder. The Beyonder lets him in, and uh, he talks about how... Beyonder gives him all the context for what happened. Uh, you know, he, he had a couple of tie-ins with like other characters like Doctor Strange, who basically teaches him like, doing good is good. Because I said so. Well, it's not quite that simple. <laughs> like, but Beyonder takes it that way. Yeah. So, uh, you know. Oh, you seem like you know what you're talking about. Okay. Right. So the it's great because uh, Beyonder has a fun gadget that like allows his thoughts to be projected as like holographic images. So he shows him like the flashbacks to the books that he was in. He also explains like who the elders of the Marvel Universe are, like Order and Eternity and the Inbetweener and Chaos and Mephisto, the Living Tribunal and everything. And Dave's like, I didn't know that was real. Huh. I didn't know that was a thing. I thought that like there was just maybe nothing or God. And it's, there is no That's... God. There are those things and you. And they <laughs> don't care. Right. And they're like interested in like Spider-Man <laughs> for some reason. You know, like what the fuck? But Dave does not just like kill himself at the end of this. He's, <laughs> like, he's not like, huh. Nothing matters. <laughs> Like, well, I'm out. Which would have been amazing. I don't want any part of that. Yeah, Beyonder's like, Nonsense. no, it brings it back to life. Yeah. 
I'm not nope, I'm I'm not nope I want die. out. That's the right response. Yeah. Oh my God. Does so. he run into someone who just wants to die and keeps killing themselves over and over? No. That would be fucking awesome. It, it's That is no different than most of the things that happened in this book. So it's I like, mean, I'm he surprised did that with Boom Boom. He did. Well, he made and her. And he did that with Yeah, but girlfriend. he knew that she regretted it at the end. What if he ran into someone who really wanted really to die? Really wanted to die. And just like, I have a right to die. Because Let me die. Because that's not the lesson. They, they actually reinforce the suicide is like a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Right, right. Yeah, I'm thinking more like a, like a terminal. Yeah. No, that'd be cool. Well, he's like, there, you don't have your terminal. Yeah, that's true. But uh, basically, you know, he says, okay, I think I get what the headline is for what you're doing. You want to preserve life itself. I'm in. And Beata's like, you're in? Like, Dave? What is Dave <laughs> going to do? Who the fuck is Dave? Like, Dave, him away. Dave is Beyonder's hype man, and Dave creates an entire business around selling Beyonder and promoting how great he is. He basically yeah. creates Scientology. <laughs> That's awesome. We're going to yeah, write some books. and Beyonder is real. We're going to create And it's a... like tangible, and you can show. Like, there's Beyonder. Look, he just saved us from a tidal wave. Like, right. worship Beyonder. But not even worship, just like, he's great. Aren't you right. in on Beyonder? Like, Don't you think, isn't your opinion of Beyonder like more positive than right? negative? And if it isn't, then like here's this pamphlet about yeah. how great the Beyonder is. Now, how do you feel about Beyonder? And <laughs> do, you, do you have 10 minutes to talk about Beyonder? <laughs> and Beyonder is like, I don't need any of the things that Dave is doing, but it gives Dave joy to do it. So I will allow him to do it. Yeah. Dave really cares about my image. Doing good right. is good. Right. But I don't. He likes this. Yeah. He likes to do this. Fuck it. But I don't need it. And there's Steve over there. Steve murders puppies, but yeah. he likes doing it. <laughs> oh, is that the it wrong It brings lesson? him joy, so. So Owen comes home from a long day's work and he finds that like some flowers that they got died and she's like, oh, Owen, I just bought those flowers. Like, that's fine, I'll change the molecules and make them fucking alive again, doesn't yeah. matter. And she's like, oh, and I, I was so busy tending to you at the door uh, that like our food melted. And he's like, that's fine, I'll just undo that. There you go. And uh, she's like, wait. Life has no consequence. Oh. Blam! <laughs> there you go. And then you don't want to do that anymore. No, he doesn't do that. He's just like, he's 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 very distracted. And they're watching TV. And she's like, what do you fuck? Normally you're watching TV with huge intent. But now you seem distracted. And he's like, because the watcher's here. And it's really annoying me. What? Kind of watch you. Show yourself. And the watcher's like, all right. I am watching you. You got you're me. Right. I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Let me just put my pants back on. Mundentity gets me hard. <laughs> Something about to happen with Molecule Man? <laughs> kind of. Okay. He's he's breaking his oath again. Oh. But 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 it, the Watcher never breaks his oath. He never interferes. Yeah, except for all the other times he does. Except the only reason we know he exists is because he breaks his oath. But uh, he explains like the same shit that Watcher told Dave about. He, he gives you the origin for uh, Molecule Man for no reason, and then explains like, listen, all the Watchers agreed that I am the oath breaker, so I get to go break my oath. Huh. I've been asked. I've to already come done here. it once, so I'm already damaged goods. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, I can never go back. Yeah. Now, he can go back. They're happy to let him. Uh, but uh, he's like, listen, you're the only one who could stop the Beyonder, and the Beyonder's about to fuck shit up, like forever. Oh. And we need you to do something he's about, about to it. Cross the lines. Yeah, because right now you can stop him. And he's like, I don't care about that. I don't care about anything. I can stop everything from happening. I can. I'm, I'm, I'm basically a god myself. I don't care. All I want to do is watch F Troop <laughs> with my chubby wife and like bang her and go to my boring ass job. Like leave me alone. And watch is like, good luck. All right, goes, you selfish prick. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, our troop's about to be canceled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watcher isn't that powerful. If he were, he could do it himself. But he's like... He, All I could do is talk to you. Yeah. Owen's like, go call somebody else. He goes, I'll try. Okay. Thanks a lot. So he leaves. And uh, he you goes know. and talks to the network executives at NBC. I got to get... You got to cancel that trip. <laughs> just, just trust me on this. Hello. The fate of the universe depends <laughs> on it. Uh, anyway. I'm not supposed to interfere. Yeah. But... This is really important. So he like he does like deep. Do deep you bring back Starsky and Hush. Yeah, he does like deep market research about like F Troop and Hogan's Heroes and shows like actually these shows are all already on their way out. Like the the, the audience is diminishing. There's yeah. no good market. I'm just asking you to accelerate the timetable a few months. I'm not interfering. I'm yeah. just I'm just cutting to the chase. All I'm saying is reality TV is gonna be huge. Yeah. Beyonder comes back and Dave's like, wow, like okay, so you got an appointment to stop this earthquake at this time, and you gotta do this. And he goes, Yeah, I already did all that. I actually stopped like a whole bunch of shit happening in the other galaxy while you were talking to me. Like, <laughs> I don't care about that. And he's like, Well, you got another meeting. 
meeting, you're gonna meet with Fanta Mr. Fantastic and Captain America. And they're like, all right, instead of dogpiling on you and hitting you with our special hammers and stuff, we're just gonna talk to you, because now you have a business and an infrastructure. Like we call yeah, your secretary, now we can deal we set up an alarm. Now you have a PR company. Exactly, yeah. so like he, they go, listen, like, you're kind of upsetting the apple cart here. If you can do anything, then you're ruining like freedom for everybody. Right. And and Beyonder's like, are you sure, really? I mean, like you seem to know what you're talking about. And Dan's like, no, 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 Beyonder, don't, don't listen to this fucking guy, okay? You, you know, every time, you know, every time everything goes good for me, there's like a secret war or a fucking pre-scroll war or something, you know, all right, forget it. You, you know, you're just, you're just mad because the Beyonder's bigger and more powerful than you are. That's that's your problem. Beyonder, give me your imaging thing on for a second. I want to depict the cover of this issue which is just a metaphorical example of what Dave thinks the Avengers think about the Beyonder. Wow. Where, are different you mess with where they're, just, they're just jealous yes. of his power. Right. And it's like, no, Dave doesn't want to lose his sweet, cushy job. Yep. Uh, so then Cap and Reed leave and they're like, all right, well, what do we do now? And Cap's like, I think we should do what I've been doing since the book started, which is... Leave him alone and see what happens. That's, so they do. Well, it's all you can do anyway. Right, because it's God. <laughs> we just got to let this play out. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, Cap calls him. And he's like, oh, we, the world doesn't need like a big brother to watch after us and stuff. So uh, there's a big press conference with the Beyonder. The Beyonder's like, the words of Reed and Cap are hanging low in the Beyonder's mind. So he's like, hey, listen, like I'm trying mm. to help out. I'm not trying to be a big brother or ruin everything. I mean, like if, if I was like messing things up, like you tell me. And Dave's like, oh, well, my friend Beyonder means is that he's gonna fix everything. Uh, show them how cool you are. And so he makes everybody like fly. It's amazing. But and, can you uh, all be honest with me and just tell me if you think I'm doing a good or a bad job? No, no, no don't worry about that. Uh, how about give, them every, give everyone big dicks? Is this, is this a metaphor for like celebrities who like occasionally get some real wisdom yes. and then all the people around them are like, no, 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 no. I think so. Yeah. I can see That's that. It's definitely a thing. So, you know, Dave then overpromises and he's like, in fact, my boy Beyonder here is going to undo death itself. No one's going to die from now on. Oh. And Beyonder's like, yep, got it. I'm going to do that. Okay. And Thanos goes, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, Mephisto goes, oh, um, the fuck? Now, thankfully, we're intimately familiar with Mephisto. Oh, so yes. When so we see this, and we see, like, his lackeys and his demons who don't like him and want to fucking yeah, overthrow yeah. him, we're like, oh, it's all yeah. old hat for us. Yeah, we can already hear his voice, can't Except we? that hasn't actually happened yet. No. <laughs> no but I guess not. that's just always what it's like. That's what it's like. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, how's it sound? No! Oh, no! <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, I think Moore is now like, what the fuck, dude? No, that, seriously, dude! Hey! Dude! Also, because, like, Mephisto loves death the way that Thanos will... Right. Right. So right now it's like an analog. Like you're gonna see like yeah. parallels where he's like, they can't kill my beloved death. She brings me souls. Oh, interesting. So, uh, so Dave and Beyonder meet at like a restaurant in St. Louis, and <laughs> Death shows up, and Death's like, "Hi." Hey, he's I like, heard Dave you want to do death. away with me. <laughs> and so Dave's just like, "Oh god." Yeah. So he's like, "Okay, Death, I've 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 filled this 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 chalice with elixir that will kill Death." And death will accept it because death is powerless against my abilities. Right. Like, I, I can't kill death, but I can make something that would kill death. And then Mephisto shows death up. Death death? Yeah. Mm. And then Mephisto shows up with a horde of demons, and they just, just, just attack everybody. There's a like, pile on beyond her. And that Dave guy, he turns Dave, like, inside out with roots. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's like, you fucking idiot. You're going to screw everything up. Beyonder like unmakes the the problem for Dave. Dave's yeah. like, I can't hang on. Like he, he saw the. Un I've experienced that for eternity. <laughs> Dave's like, fuck you, Mephisto. You turned me into fucking roots and shit. You're a piece of shit. And then Watcher shows up with all of the elders of the universe, eternity ah. living tribunal. They're all there and they're like, stop. Please don't <laughs> do that. Don't kill Death. For the love of God. Don't, that doesn't this, exist. This Don't kill <laughs> Death. <laughs> For the love of not God. <laughs> and then Dave's like, fuck that. Here, Death, drink up. Death drinks it and dies. Wow. I love Dave. He's like, don't listen to these don't fucking squares to over here. <laughs> don't listen Just kill to, Death. Don't, don't listen, listen to, to all the things that you proved to me ruled <laughs> our yeah, universe. The machinery of our, of our existence. <laughs> kill Death. I don't want to die. Dave, you are an asshole. Dave Jesus, is the worst. Dave. Dave is the devil Dave, on Beyonder's shoulder. Dave has some fucking balls, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Dave looks into the face of, <laughs> of his own, of his god, and says no. Yeah. 
But, he was uh, just filled with roots and shit. And he's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. 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 He, was, he was thrown off for like a minute. And then he was like, God is brothers. Because he believes in uh, the beyond. Yeah. The beyond, he, he, he delivered me from, from damnation. Yeah. I, you know what? I picked my side. I'm, I'm still all in on Beyonder. Fuck all these horrible yeah, nightmare fuck, gods. Yeah, this confusing shit. I will, I will never <laughs> change my opinion on Beyonder. No. Yep. I've invested too much on I'm all in. Yeah. So uh, the elders are just like, huh. Oh well, this is fucked up. Well, Can you feel it? It's already changing. All right, well, bye. So they leave. <laughs> Marsha gives Owen the flower. She's like, "Look, I saw ET. Uh, the flowers are alive <laughs> again." He's like, "Oh, that's what." Why didn't Watcher lead with the fact that he wanted to kill Death? Right. So then Watcher. So then Molecule Man shows up, and he's like, "Okay, what's up?" Yeah. He bumps into like all the elders. What now, Molecule Man? Oh, is now problem? Molecule Man. Well, he's like, "You little bit Death. late." I didn't know you were gonna kill Death. Watcher showed up. I thought you were gonna kids left troop. <laughs> so and I'm like, all right, I'll just find another show. Yeah. yeah. So he goes to Beyond and he's like, you fucking idiot! Look at this! Look at this rose from from this bouquet of flowers. It's perfect rose. Yeah. He goes, what about it? He goes, look, and he crushes it, then it just doesn't die. He's like, look, nothing had see. Now nothing will wither and die. No, there's no there's no meaning to existence anymore. Way to go, asshole! Bye. <laughs> so he leaves. Oh wow. Bye. And then Dave's like. My God, what have I done? <laughs> so he begs Beyonder, and Beyonder, by the way, gives Dave a lot of, of foreknowledge. He's like, I can't, I've created a thing, you know, like, can God make a rock even he can't lift? Like, right. I've made a, an elixir that I can't come back from. If death drinks this, I can't bring right. her back. Right. Yeah. Because no, I made dead. the decision that it would kill her. Yes. So, so I can't unmake it. that. Yeah. And he's like, you gotta, fi you gotta fix this. We gotta bring death back. And he's like, you can't. You can't bring death back. You something has to die in order to bring death back. And oh. he's like, "Well, then let it be me. Let me die." And he's like, "Are you willing to die to to bring death back into existence in this in this reality?" And he's like, "I got, I always wanted to be somebody anyway." So Beyonder like grabs Dave and he just whittles away to bones, and then he gets like a robe out of nowhere and becomes the 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 new physical embodiment of death. It's like death's essence, like. Is, is conjured again. So death is Dave. Dave's death now. What? Yeah, it's, it is now this in This freaking guy. This random dude from Secret Wars 2 is death. Oh, also, and he grew like boobs and stuff because later <laughs> death will be a woman. Like, and I don't mean later, like in a couple of years. I mean like in tie-ins for this event. Like Miss Fisto will be like, oh death, I missed you when you died, but now you're here again, beloved. It's like, you're kissing Dave, you know. <laughs> no, I'm kissing death. Okay. Dave ceases to be. You know okay, whose bones but... those are? <laughs> Dave's bones. You ready to ride the Dave train? <laughs> so Beyonder loses his faith in everything and he destroys the machine. He's like, fuck this house and saving life. I had to, cr I killed death to preserve life and I had to make death again. This is fucking weird. Yeah. This reality These doesn't make sense. These people don't even know what they want. Right. <laughs> Yes. Dave said he won it, and then he immediately changed his mind. Yes. I mean, the master of lies convinced them that we need death. Right. Yeah. So, Mephisto builds a big, stupid, complicated machine called the Beyonder's Bane. And the Beyonder's <laughs> Bane can siphon power from the Beyonder to kill the Beyonder. Doesn't matter. It's just a big, stupid machine that, like, in a small window of time, if, like, they have the Beyonder at a disadvantage, they can imbue the machine, like, with power from the elders of the universe, and that... that Combined with like the Beyonder's own abilities, right. be able to like crack the Beyonder. It's like and kill what Doctor Doom was trying to do, right? Yeah, kind of. this is the kind of shit that, like, this is stupid as fuck. <laughs> but it's the kind of shit that Jack Kirby was all in on. Yeah, like we ha God is here, and the devil builds a machine to kill God. Yeah, fucking moi. <laughs> Nothing more Marvel than that. So, uh, you know, Mephisto's like patting himself on the back before he's ever done, done anything. And De and he says, what do you think, Death? This is gonna be great. He goes, and Death goes, the death of a god is sweet. Oh. And Mephisto goes, his or, wait, Death? What, do you mean me? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Beloved? Uh, oh. So, Bianca goes to an island and he wants to think. And while he's thinking, he bumps into another jackass whose name is Ed. And Ed, is like, what are you doing? He's thinking, he goes, cool, maybe I'll try that. And he forced gumps this shit where like people come to his island to think. Just He people... starts a fad of thinking. Yes, like a, a new age thinking fad. God damn it. So Thing is shooting a movie about himself uh, in an island like a hundred miles away or whatever. Doesn't matter. What? 
Yep. What? Wh who is oh, uh, bankrolling this? There's a tie-in where the Thing decides to start a wrestling career, and the Beyonder decides to start a wrestling career, and the and Thing realizes that like <laughs> Thing puts together Beyonder's the reason why he like killed himself on the Beyonder's planet in the first place. Like, if you didn't have your super secret war, I wouldn't have stayed on the Beyonder's planet, right. and I wouldn't have killed my the physical embodiment of my Ben Grimm self, and so I would have Alicia. So except really I wouldn't Europe have. Part. I was, she totally would have banged the Human Torch anyway. Yeah. Thing fights Beyonder in the wrestling ring, and he tries to kill the Beyonder and he like learns oh my god I'm capable of murder even though he doesn't it's, I was so, totally gonna choke him out yeah, until he you died you killed yourself was gonna on punch a him to death yeah, yeah. You yeah you're already a murderer but uh, he decides to like you know to, to chill out he's making a movie about himself on some island somewhere uh, so that's what he's doing uh Mephisto uses another character named Bitterhorn to manipulate villains of the Marvel Universe to team up and attack the uh, Beyonder, so that he's like vulnerable, or at the very least, like distracted, so they can use the Beyonder's bane to kill him. Uh, they're also bound by like the you know deal of uh, Mephisto, whatever. Uh, and then of course it's revealed that Eternity himself is like at the helm of the machine. Oh, like, this is everyone signed off on this. Yeah, plan. they're like yes, yeah, we're, we're in we're Mephisto, in, making a deal with the devil himself. Yeah. So uh, this is before we get to Infinity Gauntlet, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So like the Celestials are already involved with stuff, being like, when they get to Infinity Gauntlet, they're like, we gotta do this again. Yeah. And get involved. Oh Christ! Another fucking living god. Great. Jesus. So the thinkers are doing their thing. Ed's like <laughs> running interference. With everybody, he's like talking for the Beyonder and stuff. And it's literally like fucking Forrest Gump because at some point or another, he's oh, I'm kind of tired. I think I'll go home now. <laughs> like, he just stops. He's like, uh -huh. well, it's getting kind of crowded, so bye. And they're like, oh, we were thinking with you. And he's like, I don't give a shit about oh, that. That's, I didn't tell you to do that. Yeah. So the Beyonder wants to leave. Ed's trying to convince him not to, but Ed's nobody. So Mephisto's like, he can't leave. I'm sending people to go fucking hit him with the Beyonder. I can't fucking, he gotta, he's got to stay there. So then Mephisto manipulates the Thing into rekindling his hatred of the Beyonder to go punch him. So the Thing goes to the Beyonder's island under the, like, you know, duress or thrall of Mephisto. He makes a contract with Mephisto, by the way. Oh. Uh, he doesn't know he's making a contract. He, makes, he <laughs> thinks he's making a contract with his own dead father. I'm sorry, they show oh a my picture God. of uh, the thing swimming? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he he's, he's buoyant. This, this rock man. Was he he, just, he, he just should just looks like rock. He should just walk across the ground, but whatever. Yeah. So the thing swims to the island where Beyonder's thinking. And uh, while the Beyonder is rejecting Ed's suggestion for fame and glory, <laughs> the thing shows up and he's also been imbued with power. Like, oh. from, from Mephisto. Mephisto and, yeah. yeah, hell power. Yeah, so he's able to kick the shit out of Beyonder. He should be flaming rocks right now. He should be really cool. So he goes to kick him, and then the uh, Legion Accursed attacks the Beyonder. Which what is, is that? Up, it's just everybody that made a deal with Mephisto oh. earlier in the book. So they go, and the thing is like, oh my god, these people are coming, they're going to kill the Beyonder, and they just might do it. Hell, I could do it. But like that's wrong. Killing is wrong, and I'm not. I'm not a monster. So that he uses the little power that he has that he could use to kill the Beyonder to fight and defend the Beyonder from oh. the Legion, which of course throws off Mephisto's plans, and they can't like, use. What the are machine. you doing? Yeah. No, you're an idiot. You should have been listening to me. No. Why are death-sized little skulls? Because that's cool looking, right? No. Isn't that dope. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Especially since her head's a skull. Yeah, yeah. there's just little skulls She's inside the a big skull. skull. with more little skulls yeah. in the eye sockets, and then those little skulls have this even smaller skulls. This is a dollar skulls. store Halloween decoration, which is just too over-designed. Yep, there's too much going on. It so. looks goofy. It looks like the eyes are bugging out, like, woo! <laughs> mm -hmm. It's goofy as shit, like this whole book. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is winning. He's like beating most of these villains. Yeah. And Mephisto's like, fuck! He's getting like this superpower from me. So he I, I never agreed that the thing should be against me. <laughs> so the so Mephisto tears up the contract, he gives Thing back his soul. Uh -huh. Juggernaut punches the thing, and now Thing is regular powered. Right. So, so the Juggernaut's Juggernaut. kicking the shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing gets a second wind and like just just conjures enough strength from his just the strength of his heart. Right. To defeat the juggernaut and defend against the Beyonder, and the window of time has passed, and the Beyonder's band just falls the fuck apart because, like, it's held together by the sheer desire of the universe to kill the Beyonder, and now <laughs> that it's over, it's over. Death leaves and abandons Mephisto, and the agony of Mephisto makes everyone who's being tortured in hell uh, feel okay for a minute. They're like, oh, the baths of, uh, of, of perdition are actually kind of comforting and stuff. <laughs> and Eternity's like, fuh. It's weird. He just walks, turns God his back on him it. and leaves. That's what I get for working with fucking Mephisto. Uh, yeah, why did I even bother? Jeez. Ugh. Every time. Beyonder learns like, well, I try to be a hero and I can't do that. So if I can't do that, I'll teach. 
So Beyonder just decides to become a teacher. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it well, <laughs> those who can't do and those who can't teach. I learned teach. one thing in this world. And I'll just, I'll just make a living telling other people how I did it. Instead, that doesn't work out. It, it's all undone through tie-ins. And by issue eight, Beyonder is trying to talk to uh, Owen. Owen uh, has had like two therapy sessions and has like and got laid and feels like all that was in conjunction what made him a well-adjusted person, and he's totally not. And uh, so he thinks that he's able to then give therapy himself, so he like listens to Beyonder's like whingings. Beyonder like destroys, like every, he's like, breaking cities and causing volcanoes to erupt and breaks the moon in half and stuff because he's just so sick of everything and everyone's bullshit. Uh -huh. uh, Owen uses his, his, his Molecule Man powers to put it all back together. Right. It's like, Shh, it's gonna be okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, get, get it all out. Just scream into this pillow. Right. Yeah. Right. Don't so feel better now? they go on like a little bit of like a field trip where they go to visit like where like the, the, they go to look into the Beyonders memories to see like the pinhole that was punctured that made the Beyonder aware of this universe in the first place. And what he realizes is the inciting incident that causes the pinhole that breaks between Beyonders reality and ours is the formation of the Molecule Man. The energy released to make the Molecule Man causes the fissure in between universes. Oh, so it's Owen's fault. Exactly. And Owen's like, oh shit, it's my fault! And Beyonder's I like, refuse to accept responsibility! And he's just like, oh my god, that's all my fault! Oh no! What? Beyonder's like, what's, what? 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 <laughs> and Beyonder, and, and so they, they chill out, and you know, Beyonder's like, uh, Owen's like, you gotta fall in love. And he's like, love's bullshit! Allison Blair didn't fucking listen to me! Ugh. Uh, that's just such a stupid, mundane cause I of know, this god like, coming into our universe. It could be that the, the Molecule Man was meant to be that way. You know, later uh, Hickman will retcon that like there's a race of Beyonders, you know. So like, it, it, maybe they willed it. So it doesn't matter. Like, mm. but uh, yeah, Do they okay. all have their own reality or universe. They come from the Beyonderverse, but like, right. they are. It's but, like it's like the the Q continuum. Okay, okay. right. So like, always when the been Beyonder was like, it's all empty and it's just me. But like, there are multiples of him. Yeah, but He's really, like, I meant it, me. It, yeah, no, me no, is we. This Beyonder is actually younger than the other Beyonders. Oh. But we'll we'll get into that later. But uh, well, all right. At least there's some link between the Beyonder and Molecule Man yes. that is now established. Oh yeah, and in fact, Hickman will go full tilt with that. Like how mm. that's really important. So, uh, you know, Beyonder starts to see through Owen's bullshit. As you see, he's come a long way. He's able to see through deception yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But Owen's basically like, you need to be vulnerable in order to like fucking feel and stuff. And Beyonder's like, oh, so that you can kill me? You want me to be vulnerable so you can kill me? That's bullshit. Well, I'm going to destroy everything. And Owen's like, oh, come on, don't, don't do that. That's oh, where I keep man. my stuff. <laughs> and Beyonder's like, all right, I'll give you 24 hours and then I'm going to destroy, I'm going to unmake reality because it makes me so mad. So he uses 24 hours to like dick around. He like goes to a hotel, five star. He has luggage for some reason. He goes to a nice <laughs> restaurant. He meets a pretty waitress. He forces her to like sleep with him in his hotel room. Oh my God. But her like, her dedication disgusts him. So he makes her go away. He like destroys the city and then unmakes it. Like, and, and then, you know, he, he's like, you only have like agency because you're pretty, but now you're old and then you're not again. Get away oh from me. God. And the X-Men attack him again. He's like, oh my God, these guys again. X-Men yeah. again? Yeah. Knock it off. So the X-Men attack. Uh, they, they fail. Rachel Summers summons the Phoenix Force, which she has, and tries to kill him. But it's not powerful enough, obviously. I right. beg your pardon? The Phoenix Force is not powerful. Yeah, no. Fucking the anti eternity I needed a goddamn machine. <laughs> so, uh, he, so she fails. Owen's watching it all through like his magic portal that he makes. And he's like, oh no, what if he's coming for us? Ugh. So then... So in what? his last 24 hours... Owen creates a little magic square yes. to watch something that's happening. Yes. He watches TV again, <laughs> but now TV. it's beyond yeah. vision. Yes, and well, he's watching that reality TV you thought he should yeah. so, uh, one, so, so Owen, Owen, you hack. <laughs> so Owen creates a bubble around Denver, Colorado. Uh, should be stronger than the Beyonder. And he doesn't give a shit about the fact that, like, there are people outside or inside the bubble, people trying to leave. Yeah. The planes are being, like, bounced into That's them. Fucking awesome. Beyonder shows up because, is he serious? Shatters the bubble yep. just to show him that yeah. he can do it? No. No, no Owen. Yeah. I said I was going to destroy everything. Yep. You're I not saved. Yep. Fuck you. Uh, it's glass. It falls. Owen makes it not so. The Beyonder goes to talk to the Hulk. He realizes that, like, in a other Hulk book, Bruce Banner is outside of the Hulk's body, so the Hulk is just a rage machine, mm. uh, but just wants to be left alone. Uh, it gives Beyonder some introspection. He bumps huh. into Spider-Man again. 
uh, he's like, hey, Spider-Man, let's talk. Because last time we talked, like, you taught me a little bit about, like, humanity and how to take a deuce. So <laughs> let's talk. And last time you were wearing a red and blue suit, but now you're in this cool blacker suit. I'm going to listen to you more. Yeah, and, like, yeah. it's interchangeable. He just randomly switches between them for some mm. reason throughout the book. But uh, Also, last time we talked, I wasn't going to destroy the world in I 24 totally hours, am. but now I am. So everything's kind of different now. Yeah. So he's like, like, I don't care. I have to save people. It, yeah. Well, no, the, Spider-Man is done saving people. He goes to his house or his apartment. And then mm. Beyonder shows up. And he goes, oh, hey, okay. Beyonder, welcome back. I can't let you use my bathroom. You totally wrecked it last time. <laughs> so you, you didn't use it right. So I, I will never forget that deuce you dropped. It was <laughs> it was otherworldly. So they talk and, you know, Beyonder's like, out of all the humans I've met, I kind of like you the most. So I want to hear from what, from what you think about existence and humanity and mortality and stuff. And, uh, I you see where you're going with this. Wheat cakes. <laughs> yeah, Change your taken, life. He should have just taken him to Forest Hills and just yeah. like, introduced him to Aunt May. Aunt May, Aunt May would have talked his ear it. off and given him all these great lessons. Spider-Man's and... like, you know who would be really good at this? Uncle Ben. We should talk to Uncle <laughs> uh, Ben. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, here you go. but oh no, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. Oh, oh not no. anymore. Okay, see you later. <laughs> so... Well, oh, and Gwen Stacy. We should talk about Gwen Stacy and George Stacy and <laughs> Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, she's well, awesome. Well, talk to me. Get the fuck out of here, Beyond Earth. dipshit. I got my family back. <laughs> okay, Good luck with all back. your Beyond Earth problems. Yeah, that Peter Parker like... is done being Spider-Man. <laughs> so, uh, Spider-Man tells a story about how he's like, I was swinging by, and by dumb luck, I came upon a, a suicide or somebody was jumping off a building. And when I reached out to catch him, he reached back. Hmm. And that struck me because... Here is a person who's going about his his his, me, his his every mean to kill himself, and yet in that moment he he sought to preserve his own life. Yeah, he still didn't want to. And that kind of taught me a little lesson about like confronting mor mortality. And Beyond was like, "That's interesting." And he's like, "Yeah, because like everybody confronts mortality at every minute of every day." And like, you know, and he goes, "Ugh, I'm sick of hearing about this. Exist existence is meaningful because you can die. That's stupid." And he goes, "Well, I'm, I mean, like that's how it is. Like, well, that's not fair because I can't." Right. He's like, well, I mean, like, that's all I can do. I, I'm sorry. He goes, I, I, look, I'm, I didn't mean to piss you off. And he goes, you irritate me more than any other person I've ever met. And I'm what? like, literally in the last page, he's, yep. you, I You're like you person. more than yep. but That's like, that betrays yeah. that like, is a fucking man boy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But he goes, well, you may have just talked me out of obliterating existence. We'll see. Hmm. And Spider-Man's like, thanks. Uh, great, I guess. And I love it. He, just, he walks out the window and like a couple blocks later, the, mutant, the, the new mutants attack and they attack him and then he fucking... You know, he just swats them away. Of all the people who attack me, mutants, mutants seem to be the most, most upset. reliably are violent toward me. Mm. Interesting. No more mutants. <laughs> so Owen decides I'm going to pack up everything, and he tries to Mary Poppins his apartment into a box so they could like leave and go uh, to another reality. Oh, he should oh. have that bag. That's yeah. like, we, we, this reality's fucked. We got to get out of here. Right, we're done. It's, he, it's he's burned. Totally, he's totally going to do that. <laughs> So she goes, Marshall, we gotta get out of here. So she goes, no, we're not gonna leave. This is our home and our reality. Show a fucking backbone for a change, man. Like, what's wrong with you? Uh, so, oh. so uh, you know, Beyonder's back in his favorite spot, top of Mount Everest or whatever. Actually, yeah. he's on the top of the Andes. Oh, okay. And he goes, ugh, Peter Parker might think this view is beautiful. What an asshole. Uh, <laughs> what a douche. What a douche. He's Looks like in, shit. He's sitting in like, an easy chair on the top of the Andes Mountains, and he's just like, you know, and he's like, what a fucking stupid asshole. <laughs> this is really good. Cool. Okay. You know, actually, that's kind of, all right. You know what? Maybe I'll go back to Owen and I'll apologize. That was, because like, he, he has a minute to himself. Right, he to just takes a himself. second. And he's like, like the, mor and the mortality thing, he's like, you know, maybe the reason why he thinks that is because he's, more, he's mortal. Maybe the reason why everyone's acting like this is because they see their own mortality. Mm. Huh. I'll go talk to Owen. So he goes back to the apartment, he goes, hey, Owen. And Owen's like, hey, Beyonder. Brr, and just blast him with all the energy he possibly can. Oh, my God. And Beyonder's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I was coming here to help, but now I'm going to wreck everything. And Marsha goes, no, please. And she throws himself at Beyonder. She's like, I love you. I'll be with you. I'm, I'm yours. Just let me live. Give me a few more seconds of precious life. D -d Don't just kill this pathetic worm and get him away from me. Oh, and my like, God. Marsha, what? What are you doing? Is get away from me, you cow! You disgust me. And she's like, "No, please! I'll just do anything. Just to let me live for a few more seconds." And then she goes, "Kill him, not me!" And she runs away. And he goes, Mar "And then Owen just what the hell? Owen collapses. Oh my god! And Beyonder goes, "Get up!" And he kicks him. And he's like, "Huh? Later!" And he blinks out. 
<laughs> but, but he like, teabags him a couple times before he does. He might as well. Like, you know what? Maybe I will go bag Marsha. Yeah, maybe I will. <laughs> Marsha is just outside the window, and uh, she she's like, I she she did it to distract the Beyonder. Oh. So that she could go and call the Avengers or somebody. Well, yeah, what are they gonna effective. do? Yeah. And she knows that like. She's she's like she's willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. She's willing to let go of their relationship. The, the ultimate sacrifice of belittling Owen. Yeah. She feels bad. She's sad. She's crying when she's driving I'm away. I'm so sad I had to do that, but there was no other way. There was no other way to do that. Except just like letting him be himself because the Beyonder was just going to fuck off anyway. Yeah. The Avengers uh, go and attack the Beyonder and then there's a tie-in where that happens. Uh, <laughs> also in that story, uh, there's also in between, the Beyonder deals with the Fantastic Four. We deal with the fact that like when Doctor Doom died, he he jumped his brain into a passerby who was next to Aunt May and then lived that guy's life, but he was like married and had a family and stuff. Or at the very least, I think he just had a he just had a wife. But like that guy was just he's in Doctor Doom's armor and he's just got Doctor Doom's brain. <laughs> and so like it's just Doom. You never you would never know it. Right. But like then his mask comes off, people see it, like the wife is like, No, that's my husband. What are you doing? Why are you being Doctor Doom? And like the Fantastic Four get involved and the Beyonder shows up and he's like and, and, you know, Reed is like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, what? So, Beyonder, Beyonder, what did you do? Yeah, Beyonder makes a separate body for Doctor Doom, and that guy gives the guy back to his wife, and then goes like, oh right, like Doctor Doom died when I did my Secret Wars. So this Doctor Doom that I brought back to life, that I separated from him, that, that escaped death, I'm gonna send him back in time to be grabbed by me and get sent to Secret Wars. So time is a is a loop. Oh. So Doctor Doom is always stuck. Yeah, he's always gonna die. Marsha calls everybody. She calls right. the Avengers, but Reed Richards picks up. He's like, I'm the only one here. <laughs> and so... Uh, Won't someone answer that damn phone? Yeah. So then everyone teams up. They all meet up. What does she tell them? Oh, she tells them, you know, like the Beyonder's going ma- to wreck everything. I think he's really serious this he's time. He's totally serious this time. So they're like, okay, well, if he's serious, all right. All right. Well, I guess we'll all jump on him again. And yep. it's and not going to work. Yeah, but- that'll work. At so, least we'll say we try. Yeah, so they go and do that, and uh, Marsha's like, I'm Volcana, I can help. And they're like, nah, you're new, fuck off. So then she goes back to her apartment. Actually, Rachel Summers teleports her back to her apartment. Huh. She's like, we don't need you, bleh. So she goes back to her old apartment, she's like, oh man. This is where I this, watched a lot of TV with Owen. This is gonna be really awkward when I go there and he's crying yeah. from like 24 hours ago. When uh. she gets there, the apartment's destroyed and he like wrecked his, his precious teddy bear from when he was oh. a kid. And Owen's sitting in, the, in a chair waiting for her. Oh boy. So uh, Beyonder creates a sanctum underneath the Earth's core. You know, he just goes down there. He makes like a, and he decides to like talk his way out of his plans and he does so by recording himself. I don't know, he's just, oh. he's just so vain. Puts himself on TV. Maybe, maybe Man, it's just, so he's just he's filming it for ah, posterity. Yeah, I he see. films it so he can watch it later and be like, that's what my voice sounds like? Right. Oh, I can't oh. show this everyone. I can't destroy reality. Yeah. So, you know, he's talking about how he basically has come up with a new solution. Oh. Is it and a final solution? <laughs> it's his final solution. Uh, he, he creates a machine that will be able to make him a body that he can like, so he can dump his power into the machine. The machine will siphon off the power in one area and make a actual mortal body come out of it. It's like a cloning machine. Right. Okay. And so he wants to experience death. He wants to experience mortality. Right. And like live as a true human. Like he doesn't understand, and he's never understood, and now he's finally gonna get it. He knows the heroes are coming for him, and he killed the new mutants, so he uses the machine first to- He killed the new mutants? Yeah, he killed oh, them yeah, in, he killed in, them. in their own book. Yeah. And uh, so he, he recreates the new mutants and just regrows them, literally just just dumps them out of a fucking incubation <laughs> chamber, and as like clean slates, send them off to fight the X Men, the Avengers, and the Fantastic uh, Four. Okay, so that's where this happens. While yeah. he while he goes and does his his thing, which is dump himself into the machine and regrow himself, but he doesn't want to be a baby, so he's like it's gonna advance age me, and he tests it out by making the new mutants who are teenagers. Right. So he like makes himself and he grows himself into an adolescent and then jump dumps out and he's born and he's like, Wow, what a rush. I'm my own son. <gasps> and then runs into the machine and takes his power back. He can't live without the power. Oh wow. Becomes omnipotent and omniscient again and he's like, ha ha that's, that's funny that he can't even do it for like a split second. Yeah. Nope. So, uh, wow. oh, okay, Woo. Yeah. I'm back. Literally that, Woo. and he goes, okay, okay, that, that didn't work. Okay, that, okay. Was, that was a mistake. That was, that was... No, let's try it again. So he does it again, <laughs> and then he's 
burnt him and, he, and he's dumped back out. And he's like, okay, cool. Now I gotta try. And he like lifts, the, he tries to lift the machine, but he can't. He's like, wow, I have limits. Let's see what this body can do. And he like runs really fast. And he's like, whew, I'm out of breath. What a rush. This is amazing. I'm feeling things. Oh, and then uh, the, and the Mephisto shows up and he's like, ah. Oh. You're a person now, are you? Oh. You're mine, asshole! And so, like, the demons come and they're like, and he's like, no! Nah! And he goes, oh, you cower before me! That's exactly what I want. I want to <laughs> see you beg for it, you little piece of shit! <laughs> you took my death away from me! What am I gonna do? Oh, man, what am I gonna do? What are we gonna do to you? The things I'm gonna do, I could boil you in oil. Ah, yes, I know. I'll make your skin into maggots. Bleh! And he's like, Bleh! <laughs> hey, you don't like maggots, I have a more maggots. And he opens his mouth, maggots just pour out of him and into the guy. Oh and he's like, God, God, this can't be real. And then he goes, wait a minute, no, no, no. This isn't real. You're the Lord of Illusion. This is lies. And so like, the, it goes away. Mm. And he goes, get thee hence, Mephisto. And it's like, oh, you're doing more biblical shit. What? And he goes, well, I'll, I, all I need is my omnipotence and I'll be able to, 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 to make you go away. And he goes, well, go get it. It's all on fire. It's through hellfire. You're going to have to burn yourself to get it. And he's like, well, I know it's not real. So he reaches through it and he's like, his flesh burns. And, uh. like, and he knows it hurts, but it's like, a, it's fake. So he's like, you're a liar. And then he gets omni his omnipotence again. Uh, Meanwhile, the wow. heroes are just like. This is crazy. I know. This is freaking dark it's and messed super up. super weird. And oh, by the way, when Marsha goes to the apartment, she bumps into Owen and Owen's like, hey, so yeah, I was a little upset at first, but I learned a lesson. I felt horrible. I wanted to die. But then it occurred to me that if I was nothing without you, then what was I in the first place? So actually dumping me gave me agency. And now I'll be able to love you for real because I never loved you in the first place because I thought like, because it was all transactional. I like, I needed you. But now that I don't need you, I know that I love you. So now we can be we can be together again. And she dumps his ass right there. And she's no, like, they oh, get, that's pretty messed up. No, she's like, wow, that's amazing. I love you. Yay. Okay. So they get back together. Oh, so don't worry about Marcia. Owen. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> so uh, you know the new mutants uh, attack the you know the team. Molecule Man shows up. He's like, hey, I'm ready to help. Okay. No, oh, for real this time. I, I have agency now. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a wimp. Yeah. Anymore. So the new mutants attack the team. They have a big silly slap fight. It's <laughs> in, it's entirely inconsequential. Yeah. Uh, Rachel is like, wait a minute, I know. I'll give them back the memories, even though they don't have them because these are just husks. <laughs> yes. And not husk. No, not the husk from Generation X. It won't be invented for 10 years. But uh, so they, they, they realize from the mental imprints of the new mutants who had just been born seconds ago that he's below them. They, they drive down through the core of the earth into his base. They go to attack him. He's like, hey, get away. I'm not done. Not done. He's not done getting his power back? I'm not done. I've, I've figured it out. I've just put it together. I know what I need to do. This time. This time I know what I'm going to do. Okay. The Malk, And so what Beyonder's plan is, is he's going to make a body that he's going to become a superhero. He's like, I need some measure of power, but not all like, of it. But not, not omnipotence and omniscience. I can live. I can die. But I'm still myself, like a right. body that I, I need to be a superhero. Yes, I need to be a Captain America I, or right. something to be special. Yes, I need yeah. to be special. Yeah, Maybe. because I can't be I can't be like one of you people reading this thing. No, that would be stupid. <laughs> well, also because like I know, like he's like I I was a mortal, dog by Mephisto, but because I knew he existed, because I knew about the 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 mechanicry of the universe mm -hmm. like i it didn't bother me it'd be like knowing that god existed and being like i can do whatever i want he's right there and he thinks i'm cool <laughs> you know like i don't i don't i it, it's cheating so yeah. what what level of power does he want to give himself it's really it's really uh, arbitrary uh, yeah we don't know oh I mean, it's never really explained it's just like he's got it. He's got it perfect. Like, how does he determine what is the right? Like, well, I just have to keep coming in and out and in and out. Well, that, being that like, doesn't work. Let's see, seventeen percent? No. How about yeah. how about eighty? Oh, should, not should I be too much? Too much. Should yeah, like sixty-three. Uh, like a Hawkeye level, right? Spider-Man, right? Or like, or a, Hulk like or something? a Hulk? Maybe like a Hulk. Or Adam, Adam really Warlock. Though. He seems pretty. Powerful. Oh, but what, what about like celestial level power? Right. Should I have that? No, it, 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 or he, just like a regular Kree dude? He does it like, three what times. He's worked it out. Okay. And he doesn't explain any further. Oh, third time's a charm. The point is, I found the perfect exact right amount yes look the, the point is we're supposed to get that he's figured it out and the heroes don't know it and so they dogpile on him <laughs> and he immediately swats them away yeah and then molecule man's like you'll find i won't be bested so easily and they and they have their big fight which is felt throughout everything like oh the he's universe already shutters. the perfect amount at this point no he's just no, he's, he's back he's, to being beyond he's about to. Oh, okay yeah so the so beyond are at full strength and Molecule Man at full strength, they all just attack each other. And they yeah. and it becomes this whole thing. While Molecule Man battles Beyonder, the heroes are like, ah, oh, like he's he's at a weakened point, so now we can pile in and they attack. At one point, <sighs> only so many people can hit him. 
<laughs> all right, yes. we gotta all like, come in from different he only angles. Takes up like a six foot radius. Like, yeah. like the people on the outside are just punching their friends. Yeah. Yes. Well, they're they're you know they're trying to be careful. So like, yeah. uh, Mr. Fantastic, he can be as far back as possible because he can stretch in between people. <laughs> yes. Hulk's got to be in close because yeah. he's got the biggest fit. Right. You know, they're yeah, arranging he's also themselves. Up a whole well, lot of room. It, yeah. he, they they dogpile on him. He teleports them away and he displays his power by like throwing the earth off its axis and like rending the universe in twain. Like he oh. just, he breaks everything to try and get them to fucking go away. Right. And then he he enacts his his evil scheme to be mortal. And he <laughs> like throws his power to the machine. He imbues his essence into the cloning facility. Yeah. And it starts to conjure a baby. And everyone wakes up and they're all saved. And thankfully they weren't destroyed because of uh, Invisible Girl. And probably everyone also- Everyone should wake up and it should be a new battle world. Right. Owen gets back up and he's like, oh, like that, that battle hurt me. I, I'm hurt. It is not like in my leg. <laughs> I am damaged. Right. And so, like, I, I, I don't know how much left is in me. So, oh. you know, the heroes rally their forces and they go. And when they get back to the lair, they just see like a baby incubating in this big machine. Right. And they're like, well, I guess we're gonna have to kill a baby. <laughs> and well, this is our only yeah, chance. He's and, weak. Like Captain America and Mrs. Fantastic are like, uh. <laughs> I don't know if that's cool. Yeah, and then that like that doesn't seem like a totally rad thing to do. Right, and like so as they're just dis as they're discussing it, Spider-Man's spider sense goes off, and he's like, "The thing's about to explode." And so Sue creates a force field that protects them, and the hey, we don't have to kill the baby; it's gonna kill itself. No, the machine exploded, but it, like it basically just like it needed to send off energy to to create the Beyonder the way that he right, wanted Right, part of the way it operates. It's part of the fucking process of the seconds old machine. <laughs> so they're all like, okay, let's go. And then Mr. Fantastic's like, wait a minute. We don't know what this machine does. He's a baby. We don't know what this means. And they're like, who cares? He almost killed everything. Let's go. And he's like, stop. Just it's, wait. And they just won't do it. Just wait for like a second. No. And then, and then Molecule Man goes, no, we can't. We gotta strike now. And he fires at the machine. And Mr. Finn has, oh, are you mad? He's just, stop! Oh. And the machine breaks. I didn't get a chance to study this yet! Yeah. No! The machine breaks, it explodes, the baby is like, it screams, the, everyone is enveloped in white light and unmade and then remade and then they're all still there and the machine is broken and they recover, Silver Surfer recovers the corpse of the infant beyond her and he's like, the baby's dead and everyone feels super fucking bad for their horrible behavior and walks away. And Owen's like, I'm sorry I had to do that, but it had to be done. And Cap's like, listen, that was fucked up, but I appreciate you having to do it. Right. Thanks a uh, lot. I, uh, I really don't know if that was the right or wrong thing to do. Right, so well, I really I appreciate is... you using your superior power yeah. to make the choice for us, because yeah. we're still here. Yeah. yeah, and if there's ever a consequence for it, you it's get your fault. <laughs> so meanwhile, in the Beyond universe, uh, a portal opens and the Beyonder's essence pours into that realm, but the energy emitted creates its own Big Bang and generates its own universe with like its own planets and systems and, and life. And you see like a form of humanity grow as a result that like the Beyonder, his consciousness is dead, but his essence created the mortality and the life that he, that he sought. But don't worry because they throw all that away immediately after this to mm. retcon who the Beyonder is twice, no, three times. <laughs> and then also that they never reference this reality that he that he creates. But like oh. to bookend oh, it, you know, the, the Beyonder realm was empty. It was, a right. void, but right. Beyonder through his like, his bumbling of the Marvel universe, he eventually creates a reality. Yeah, so with, with life in it. Where the humans evolve in this, so could this be our world? It could be. Is this like the origin well, of like our universe? It absolutely could be. And what's interesting about that is it actually has echoes in New Avengers Illuminati, where there's a chapter that covers this. Oh, really? Where wow. uh, the Illuminati go to deal with the Beyonder, and the Beyonder eventually just leaves and goes to our reality. And he says, where was I? Oh yes, the world. Hmm. It's like, was the Beyonder visiting our world or was, is he the creator yeah. of it? Or is right. he our God? The right. problem is Bendis retconned in that book that the Beyonder was actually a mutant who went through terragenesis and became super powerful. No, no. one, no one, we did that book. No yep. one agrees or listened to it. So that's, yeah. that's garbage. So that's 
They also retcon after this, but before Bendis's, that the Beyonder is actually a cosmic cube that gained sentience <laughs> and then became an entity, which is also horseshit, and don't worry about that either. So that's gone too. <laughs> and then Hickman retcons that the Beyonder is a child of a race of Beyonders, and they all die, and Doctor Doom takes their power and becomes the like supreme being of the universe, yeah. which we talked about a little bit uh, over the years. But... Uh, it's the closest to this, but also undermines everything about it. Yeah. Uh, so that's the story of Secret Wars 2. It's super weird and dense, and all the tie-ins are just like a regular superhero adventure, but then the Beyonder shows up and either mucks up the plot or gets out of its way. Yeah. This is. I'm just reading the technical details of what occurred when the Beyonder and... <laughs> Molecule Man were fighting. Oh, I yes. think you would have a field day with this book it, if you went into it. Oh well, it's like bonkers, but uh, they destroy the Rocky Mountains. Right. And Molecule Man moved every human who was in the way. Yes. Every living, every thing, living that thing that was in the way. And he, he put him in a pocket universe. Yeah, he put him in a pocket universe to get later. Yeah. That's that. That happens in one panel. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't happen on any panel. I mean, that, yeah, he just tells you <laughs> that it happened. Yeah. No, I put them on the sun. <laughs> Yeah. What? By yeah, way, but I made the sun cool like ice, so they're what? not. <laughs> We're gonna even worse. No, if we if we if we, fix, if we fix this problem in ten minutes, we should be fine. Yeah, they won't freeze to death immediately. Look, the light's still gonna take uh, eight minutes happening? for it to get exactly. here. Exactly. It's only fun. In that issue, by the way, he he meant he mentions he goes back to that, to that pocket thing and puts everybody back. Oh, uh, okay. After he fixes everything. Right. Wow. Secret Wars two. A lot going on. I love how it's like Secret Wars two. Ah. <laughs> And then they're like, next year, they're like, oh, Secret Wars 2. This will be fun. <laughs> yeah. Existential dread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this dialogue between Marsha and uh, Owen. Molecule Man. Oh, yeah. She calls him Owie. It's very confusing. It's Owie. Owie, right. <laughs> Marsha, I'm sorry, but I, it had to be that way after he kills the baby. Her response, I guess. <laughs> I don't really think I'll ever understand, but I'll get over it. Yep. I love you. What? Maybe. I guess. Okay. I guess. Whatever. Okay. No, you gotta sell it. You gotta be like, <laughs> I guess. Maybe one day I'll understand. But but I love you. Yeah. I know. Maybe I like the other one. I think it's. I guess. I guess. I'm a. I'm a. I'm as dumb as a sack of rocks. Yeah, well, it's just. It's whatever. Just an whatever. Mark after it's like. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess. There's no question mark. It should be a question mark. <laughs> I guess. I don't think I'll ever get it. But I'll get over it. I'll get over but I'll, it. But I assume I'll get over it. The, the murdering of a child. Don't worry about it. I'll get over it. Uh, I don't want you to worry about you me worry. being upset Look, about you murdering baby. that baby. Yeah. It's some weird science Clone. experiment. Yeah, in no. the shape no of a baby. There's no father in this. Right? No. <laughs> oh, there's, like, a, there's a lot there. There's a lot going on. And I like don't... Is what, it, I feel like Marsha at the end of this book. Where I'm like, yeah. I, I don't get it. I, I guess I'll get over but it. I guess I'll get over it. <laughs> you can teach a course on this on Substack. I should, oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Secret Wars 2. Uh, I'll put it in the description if you want to pick up at least the trade. There's an omnibus that has all the tie-ins. <laughs> that I, seems a bit much. I don't recommend it because they don't matter. There's like three <laughs> tie-ins that actually do inform the story, but even then, like, they don't really. Like, they, they talk about how, like, the Fantastic Four books are kind of more, you know, important, but yeah. they don't set up why Beyonder acts different from one issue to the next. Right. So Much like existence itself, they don't matter. It's random and it's dispassionate <laughs> and kind of dumb and then it's over. So, we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. So long. God damn. I'm so glad we got to get a chance to do this. I've never it's fucking insane. Yeah. Holy crap. I, this book went in places I was not expecting. <laughs>